Welcome back to another episode of Bulletproof Mindset, your go-to podcast for health, fitness and entertainment. Today, I welcome a very special guest that goes by the name of Ross Walker. Now, Ross, I believe personally, is a bit of an underdog in the whole high rock space. Um, Up until recently, where he just uh, dominated his first pro solo and now holds the British record in the doubles open, I believe it is. I wanted to sit down, I messaged Ross a couple of weeks ago and, and asked if he'd be up for coming on the podcast and dive into his story. And today you're going to find out how someone goes from thinking they want to be bigger and be a bodybuilder and then how they manage to transition into this lifestyle of hybrid training. Not only that, the career aspirations that Ross has is pretty cool as well. And he has a very exciting future at just the the young age of 21. So I know you're going to enjoy today's episode. As always, with these episodes, you can check the links in the show notes uh, where you can follow Ross on social media. And if you're interested in working with him as well, of course, he does a bit of online coaching. Um, I guess more so if you're looking to um, put up some good times in the high rock space. And the last thing I would say is if you're new around here and you enjoy today's episode, so look, need a wee favour from you. One of the best ways you can support the show is by leaving a five star rating on Spotify. If you don't have Spotify, do it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to this. Or if you're watching on YouTube, comment below this video and let me know what you thought of today's episode. This helps the podcast get pushed out to more listeners and keeps the momentum of me bringing guests on to share the stories with you guys. Every Monday and Thursday, I release an episode at 6am. So with that being said, enjoy today's episode. It's another banger as always, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Last time I saw you was Gym 24. You were sitting in your, I don't know if it was a bodybuilding split that you were chasing or whatever it was you were chasing. But the main thing was you were cutting hair. That was the kind of main source of like you looked like what you were going to pursue. Mm-hmm. Um, you were also right in the gym, very dedicated. I remember seeing you there all the time. And then, as everyone does, we go off our own separate ways. And I start seeing your name pop up and I'm like, fucking hell man, this guy is a killer <laughs> athlete. What the hell is going on? So that's one of the reasons I wanted to invite you on to the podcast. Uh-huh. And uh, I've been knocking it out of the park. Uh, but my question is, first of all, what the fuck happened? How did you go from cutting hair to where you're at now? Uh, so I kind of, I started cutting hair during lockdown. Like it just, mm. kept, I lost my job during lockdown very start of it. What were you doing? I was a plumber apprentice. Oh, were you? Right, uh, so... so that's what I thought I wanted to do, and then <laughs> quickly realised building sites just wasn't for me. <laughs> How not? <laughs> oh, just, you ever, you ever worked a graft? That is a graft. Oh, it's, <laughs> I fear enough to have that does it, but it just wasn't for me. Yeah. But uh, so I started cutting hair, like my brother, pals, stuff like that during lockdown. Mm. And then obviously when things opened back up, I was like, should I keep doing this? So I jumped into that. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Mm. But I was like, kind of getting better and better. And then I got offered a job in the place where I was getting haircuts. So I was like, I'll take that. Um, so, like, like I say, I started doing that for a while. Barbara life's quite a hustle though, isn't it? It's, um, it's a lot what is it, six, long, long hours. Six, seven days. Uh, so. like I was working 9am, like 9pm, <laughs> like back to back to back to back to back, all day long. Um, aye, it's... And when you started that wage, it was about... Like, I was... 18, 19? I was about 17, 17? I think, uh, yeah. about 18, I think yeah. it was about, maybe 18. Now. Aye, so straight into it, eh? Aye. Straight into the deep end. Aye, so you, you, you strike me as someone that isn't shy to have a decent work ethic. Uh, has that always been there? Definitely, I'd say so. My mum and dad are like really, really hard working as well. Mm. So it's always kind of I've always seen it. I feel like I was young, kind of grown up. Aye. Um, and I boxed for a number of years when I was younger as well. So mm-hmm. I think doing that at a young age as well is kind of like instilled that in me as well. Because the discipline. Aye, exactly. Yeah. Aye. What did your mum and dad do? Uh, my dad's a mechanical engineer, right? And my mum owns a beautician business. Salon. So they run their own. Their aye, own so my dad's like a team leader, kind of thing right, for, a, for, a, for a big company. So, mm. aye. So the boxing—that's something I knew that was that you had dabbled into. And it's not as if you just done it part time. You done, done you done pretty well, isn't it? No bad. Aye. Aye. So <laughs> talk. It, so let's start there. Like, yeah. why did you start boxing? So I started boxing when I was. 10, uh, 10, I think. Mm. 10, no, 10, 10, 11, 10, 10, 11. Do you remember the reason why you wanted to get, get thrown into it, or was it just like a... My wee brother, there's a, there's a, the gym I boxed up for, it's just next to where I stay, so, it's, um, so he was going, and I was like, he's going, I need to go. Yeah, so, can't I have him I know, can't have him me. battering me. He's <laughs> younger than me, so I can't have him battering me. Uh, so I started going with him, and then I just got right into it, and then my big cousin, he boxed as well, and then... Um, other people I knew went to that gym as well, so it was a good wee community we had in that gym. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like I say, for young young age, I was only like I say ten when I started, and then I kind of got more and more into it. My brother ended up stopping doing it as well, so but I kept it going. Um, and I had my first fight when I was, was about eleven. I think it's about eleven. You meet, you 
like that's young as you can start yeah, yeah. basically. So I was about eleven when I started, and I just won by knock it like every fight. Well, yeah. <laughs> I had to begin with. <laughs> just a power. Yeah, I, I was like, me, I was so, I, I was so, so skinny. Like I was maybe like fifty kilos when I was boxing. Wow. Um, but I was like heavy handed basically, so I was mm. like knocking guys out constantly. Were you ever nervous? Like the first fight, I always imagine like. I don't th- know. I can remember being nervous in high school, but I can't even think if I was ever nervous, like being that young as a kid. Uh, definitely, with nerves there, of course, I. But nothing. So when you're so young, you've got this unwavering aye, confidence. Like, just, of just when yeah. guys smash them. Aye, I've probably done things from more things from younger than what I've done now. Like, yeah, I yeah. Don't know. Um, it's a sad thing you get older into. It's aye, just like, oh, <laughs> but what are people going to think of me? You don't think about that when you're younger. You just I go know, for it. I know. Uh, so I did that until I was maybe sixteen. Say about sixteen. Mm-hmm. Um, what made you stop? I don't know. I just kind of started falling away from it. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, mm. just been doing a different path. I, uh, I just started to kind of fall away from it. Like I maybe stopped going as much to the boxing gym. Went to. I was still, I was still training. Like I was still going to like the the, the gym, like the leisure mm-hmm. centre gym, where I stay. So like maybe getting more into that, and I was kind of get more into like bodybuilding stuff, like we're yeah. talking about. So like I say, I was I was dead dead skinny, right. and I did go like. Aye, I want to look better. Aye, yeah. I, wanna, I need you bigger, yeah. man. I'm, I'm too skinny. Should I seek a girlfriend here? <laughs> like, don't have this too skinny to play. Yeah, to that yeah, age, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I was only like 50, 55 kilos then. And I got right into like bodybuilding. Who and do you follow? Who were you following? Like, during this, like, like, you're like, who, I, stuff? like, what, where's your inspiration coming from? Guys like Callum Von Moga. Do you know guys like him? Aye, so I was like watching like all the kind of guys. Bradley Martin and all that. Aye, I was watching all the guys like, I want to be like, be like them then. Um, so funny, you're doing that at the age of like 16, right? Um, so I'm, you're 21, 21, yeah? So I'm 31, so I'm 10 years older than you. And when I was your age, you're like 17, 18, 19. That's who I was watching aye, as well. Aye. So it's quite cool to see <laughs> that just the generational impact uh-huh. that, he's, that he's had. I think I just that. missed the David Laid. Can I still aye, I think aye. I just missed that. I never really liked that too much, but maybe I was too older for that. Maybe that's <laughs> what it was. <laughs> so yeah, you get, you're getting this kind of buzz with aesthetics then? Aye, aye. aye. I was just chasing the look, basically. Mm. Um, was there ever any like pressure to take boxing further? Did you feel that like because you were, like, yeah. you were really from what I, I, I seen like when I was doing a wee bit of research before this, there's like news articles and all that online. It's not as if it was because <laughs> you must have been pretty decent to I get all that published. A few times, I boxed a few times for Scotland and mm-hmm. like national tournament stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't know. I honestly can't even remember the, oh, really? the the reason why I stopped. Like I just I just started to fall away from it and mm-hmm. like like I said, getting like more. Bodybuilding, mm. kind of aesthetic goals. Did you have any like tough losses with Aye, boxing? I did, definitely did. It was my so my f- my very first fight was something called the Western District, basically the Western part of Scotland. Every boxing mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. club competes in that. So I won that. I won that title, my first fight, and then I went to the Scottish Championships. My second fight, mm-hmm. and I won that. Right. Because I won the Scottish, that got me into the British Championships. So I was selected to go and box down in Doncaster for mm-hmm. Britain, eh, for Scotland, sorry. Um, I went down there I was just so inexperienced Like yeah, You just had this momentum I, like so Because I was like Like I say One of my first two fights First two titles And two fights Two knockouts as well mm-hmm. Like I just had this I was just have confidence I thought oh, I'm going down here And I'll smash right. this And I was only I don't know Maybe 13 or something At the time mm-hmm. And I just Wasn't ready for it But I went for it anyway And I went down And I just got leather. I just got humbled, <laughs> did you? Honestly, honestly, honestly <laughs> mate, I just got leather. Uh, this, this guy, his dad's a... In fact, the guy now is... I keep, I keep up with the guy who, who beat me. And he's like 16 and 0, he's a pro now. Oh, is he? Uh, oh. I think he's really went, done right. really well with it. His dad's a professional boxer as well, so... Mm. I went down there, like I said, just got leather. And I, like, it totally scunned me for ages. And that, that did put me off for a while. I, so I still trained and I, I kept it going. Um, but that took me a while to sort of... Try and put me back on track with it. Mm. Um, what did what does it look like when like how does it mess with you like that first loss? Because we all need like lessons and uh, losses, but it doesn't make it, it doesn't make the loss any oh, easier, does it? Oh, it doesn't make them no. uh, I, I didn't want to box anymore. Anyway. That was honest too. I just didn't want to box, I was like, "Fuck my thing!" Like, yeah. Can as soon you get that first loss, especially a sore loss like yeah. that, it's just horrible. Mm. It can just totally put me off with the girl. And that's when I started to go right. I'm just too. This guy was a bit bigger. He was a bit shorter than me. But he was like mm. kind of stalker. So he carries so much power that I didn't have because I was, I was taller. Like I think I'm still the same height as I was. Then I was <laughs> yeah, yeah. stayed the same, but I, yeah. I grew quite quick at yeah. that point. Um, so I was like, that's when I started going right. I need to get bigger and more into kind of like 
the gym stuff and that, the kind of weightlifting stuff. And then I still kept boxing for kind of two or three years, but I just, I just don't know. I just was like, just fell by the way, any further anymore. Mm. Um, and I think as well, like the pressure I started to put on myself, especially if I, like I got a young age, and like I was obviously need to weigh in as well for boxing. So I was like, I think there's quite a lot of bad things that come along with that as well mm. for like a young age. So like. If I was going for like the weekend, like my pals and that, this for like dinner or whatever, it's, even at school during the week, like yeah. I had to miss out on a lot of stuff to try and sort of keep this weight. But mm-hmm. I was so dedicated to it that I didn't, didn't really affect me. I didn't really go like, oh, I wish I was doing that. Um, but when I started to like weigh things up, I was just like, I could stop doing this and then just like enjoy myself in the, like is the, it, is, the gym. Do you feel like you got like there was no enjoyment at one part of it then? I like definitely. That, I think like, that's what that was like the. I, I, towards the end, I was like, I'm just not enjoying this anymore. Mm. Like, I just want to enjoy what I'm What doing. about your know, like friends and all that sort of stuff? Are they in the same circle in terms of are they doing boxing and that, or do you, do you see them starting to have a bit more of a funner lifestyle? And you're like, I want a wee bit of that. I like, I was the only one that did anything mm. like during that time. Um, so I was like, I like to say, like, I was missing it quite a lot, mm. um, especially like that kind of like 15, 16, you know, that's me. Yeah, you're starting like, to ah, you start getting, like, think about life and all that a wee bit aye, more. Aye, <laughs> pretty much, aye. Um, so I just didn't do it. So you knew early on, like, the dream or where you would go with life when they be, like, a professional boxer then. What does it start becoming in your mind? Is this where, like, apprenticeships just seem to be a thing that's thrown away at it? Let's go and get stuck into it. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, I need, to, I need to be a grown-up. Do you remember now. why? Like, did you, so did you leave school? I think uh, I was sixteen. Aye, aye so right. Like, aye, as soon as you go, it was like my, like my dad and granddad stuff like they on like the the trades and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's what I need to do. I need to go and mm-hmm. do that. So I got stuck into that, and I did that for like like until I was like, yeah, COVID, yeah. So yeah. like yeah, COVID basically so that stopped that all together. Are your mum and dad like what they like in terms of like the support or like guidance and stuff that they're given? So when you're due to pack that in, was it like nerve wracking? Were you like, oh. I, I, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. But they were like they. What I thought was might might have happened didn't happen. Right, um, so it was in your head. Aye, like I was like, <laughs> I had, how can I tell them? Like I'm going to walk away for this, like because it was like a job for life kind of thing. You mm-hmm. bunch of do your full course, and they just wanted to be wanted me to be happy. So the thing is, you think it's a job for life, but ultimately it's like, is it really? I don't know. I don't know if it's the way our generation's growing up now. I think trades and apprentices. I think they will all still exist, but. There's more. There's more like fulfillment out there. Of course it is. Um, why cut hair? Like I seen like some of my mates started cutting hair as well during yeah. lockdown. It was just, well, well, was just watching I, TikToks and like that. I could do that. Give myself a fade. Like, <laughs> um, obviously, everything was shot, and I was like, I can't, can walk a bit. Even like I was sitting in the house, I was looking in the mirror, I go, I can't, I can't sit like this. And then I cut my balls here and stuff. I was like, it's bad, but it's no. Yeah, it's too like, bad. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Ah, it's, ah, it's bad, like, but it's no, it's no terrible, terrible. Yeah. So I just kept practicing, like I said, during lockdown, mate. And mm. then once the uh, place opened back up, I went back to where I was like, going before it shut. Mm. And I just got offered to, to go in there and actually get trained properly and stuff yeah. like that. And, um, cool. And then went for it. So when do you... So training-wise, during this time, you're still fixated on adding size, adding muscle, aesthetics. Um, when do you... So... There's obviously two paths starting to happen. You've, you've got the path that you're thinking about when it comes to your career, and then you've got this, like, I don't know, this, just your fitness career, I guess, as is, is such. How does that start to evolve? What sort of breaks first? Is it the cutting hair? Because you start travelling the world a little bit, didn't you? I remember, I remember yeah. seeing that, and I was like, that's so cool that you're doing that. Um, but you were doing it in the way that you were keeping this job, am I right in yeah, saying? Yeah. And then started just yeah. seeing the world, yep. going solo travelling. The way it worked out is... Basically, how, how that started is, I was it was my nineteenth birthday, and I'd like not like I'd nothing planned for it basically, and apparently my birthday was like the Monday or something. I was pretty my birthday was a Monday, and I was talking to one of my mates, I was like, "Maybe got a day," and somehow we ended up going topic of flights and stuff like that. This was like, must be the Thursday, the Friday, <laughs> like before the Monday. So spontaneous. Aye. So I was like, "We can a day," and I was like, "Cheap flights to Barcelona," and I was like, twenty four hours in Barcelona." So I was like, "I'm gonna go there." So I literally flew Sunday morning. There for like a Barcelona all day, went out in, at night on Sunday night and then Monday and all that, and then flew back came Monday, like back to work on Tuesday. And I was like, that was brilliant. Like, I, I really? keep doing that. <laughs> so then I just like keep doing it. So then, so then we booked Italy for like no longer that, uh, no, no long later, and he pulled it. And I was like, I've already got this book, man. I was like, can I, can I go myself? And I was like, oh, I'll just go myself. So I was flying Italy myself, 
And it's the first time I've ever done it. I'd never ever been anywhere myself. So let's talk about that because I think that's that's a great thing to do. It's a great yeah. thing to get into. Yeah. Um, but equally, just as nerve wracking and stuff like that. So, what was your plans? What was it like? Like, what was yeah, the I experience? Loved absolutely loved it. I went to like Milan, Lake Como. I, I can't even mind. There's a couple of places I went to. It was there for four days. Mm. Um, I just went and explored, trained when I was there, and just I mean, seen the world. I pretty much. I. Then you come back. And then when's the next, like, what's the next couple of months you've done? you done a fair few, didn't you? I just kept going away every month. <laughs> <laughs> the way it worked out, the, the, the days I was working, I was off Sunday, Monday, and Monday, Wednesday. That was my days off at the time. Because mm. I was, like, doing, like, okay, nine, nine till nine every other day. I was like, if I can just take the Tuesday off as well, I've got, like, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to go. Mm. So I kept doing that. And I can't mind exactly the amount of places I, everywhere I went. But in that year, from that March to the December, and I went to like 12 countries in Europe. Did you? Uh, like That's class. Mad. And I was myself, except the Barcelona one, mm. I was myself every nice. single time. So you kind of fell into this soul travelling oh, lifestyle. Aye. Um, what was the best, what was the best thing from it? Uh, just being like, confident out. to go and do it. Like, oh, was it confidence? You felt like a lot of confidence, yeah. 100%. Like, there's times like you're going to miss your flight. Like, I've seen myself <laughs> chasing down like, uh, airport stuff like aye. that. Like, just, you just build this sort of, this confidence that you, I don't think you'll ever have anywhere mm. else. Um, like especially like, communicating with folk as well because you get these countries and a lot of people especially wherever wherever you go mm-hmm. a lot of these people don't speak English so you're like you're trying to work out different ways so especially when I was young I was on 19 and I was mm-hmm. doing that myself so I going to say self-awareness to do that that, that young mm-hmm. in age pretty impressive um, what's like so solo travelling I think one of the when I hear people talk about it the most undervalued thing is the like the quiet space that you create for yourself and you're also in a different country, you're seeing a different culture. Um, is that where you start thinking a wee bit wider about life a, a bit more, of I where you want to take so. things? Yeah, I say so, definitely. <clears throat> um, and it wasn't much longer after that. But, um, so my uncle lives in Australia. Mm-hmm. So I'd never been to Australia before. And he was like, come out to Australia. And I was like, right. So I was just checking flight stuff. And I was like, I'm cheaper to fly to Bali first and then go for like Bali to Australia. So I was mm-hmm. like, I'll go to Bali. So I flew to Bali myself. I was in Bali for like two weeks, and then went over to Australia and came back to Bali. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I said, I was in Bali myself, and like, I don't know if you've ever been to Asia before. Been to Thailand, Thailand. Um, but I think we, we'll, I think we're planning to go to Bali to meet Christian there, like said, and maybe in February or something right. like that. But Asia yeah. is a different world. Yes. Yeah. What's so different about it, too? There's no rules. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, there's no rules. It's mad. Um, I've been to. We're talking about now. I've been to a lot of different, lot of different countries in Asia now, and. Everyone, I'm surprising me. Who like, yeah, the life is. It's I love it. It's brilliant. And do you get caught up in the party inside of things, or is it more just nah, like nah. sightseeing and, and culture and sights? I definitely sightseeing. Like, I did to begin with, and then I was never really into it, like into party and stuff like that. And mm. now I just, I just didn't. I don't, I don't at all know like either. Mm. But that nah, was more just like the culture and stuff like that. Like, I'm nah, just trying new things and stuff. What about yeah. Nah, so I did that. I, I was there. I was there for. Five weeks. Mm-hmm. That was la- uh, that was that was uh, that was last year. That was last year, and then I came home and I was like, oh, "I need to do that again." So you still cutting hair? I was still cutting hair. Right. I, uh, I was still cutting hair. Right. And I came home, and I was like, "I need to go. I need to do that again." So I literally came home, and like maybe three weeks later, I flew to Thailand. <laughs> I just booked it, and I was like, "I need to go again." I just, I, are you getting any stick from like where you're working and that sort of stuff? The holidays that are taken, or is it the world? Do that, like. It's almost like you do you hire out a chair at that point, or is it you pay hours? Aye, so, so the less you're there, the less I guess money you make in that much. sort of aye, stuff. Yeah, aye. Um, and then I ended up going away for six weeks again, and I went. I just travelled around about. I, like, I was in Thailand for ages. Went to Vietnam. Went to Malaysia as well. Mm. Um, and loved it. What's the coolest place out there everywhere then? Thailand. Aye, Thailand. Aye. Definitely. What, what's cool about it? Like, There's like. Thailand's a massive, massive place. You've mm. got like Bangkok, kind of like city life, mm. mad, mad, mad city. <laughs> and then you've got like down south, like Phuket, and obviously off, off to the island, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the coast of Mui is where I've been. Is it? Mm. So you, there's, depending on what you want, you'll get. So like if you go down south, you can like live the sort of beach island kind of mm. uh, bit. Or you got up north, kind of up to the jungle, like Chiang Mai and stuff like that. And mm. there's other, well, there's kind of like more like spiritual places and like that kind of thing. That. I was what I was going to ask you. Do, do you find yourself getting roped into any of the spiritual no, awakening or anything like uh, that? No, nah. like you get it in Bali because it's like religious. <laughs> yeah, it's like dead, dead religious. Yeah. Um, you just start like talking to them, like, oh, it's like how's it working? You just start talking to them, and you start learning about different different mm. stuff. Um, I enjoyed that. That's yeah. 
and that's when I was in, I mean I was in Bali that's when my training started to change as well so I was still mm-hmm. chasing this kind of like bodybuilding goal but I didn't I never wanted to compete in bodybuilding like just was just wasn't my thing like I just mm. hated to look at it. it just wasn't my thing but I missed the competitive side of boxing right I was like I'm chasing a goal that isn't even a goal like I'm chasing this look that I don't even know what I'm actually uh, chasing were you happy and content with how you looked or was it always bigger nah, more nah. muscle I was like I got even now I look back in photos I go it's too big like, <laughs> really honestly, uh, like, I look back in photos like you're like I can remember I felt skinny there and I'm actually quite jacked I, like, I it's was, crazy isn't it I was 18 years old and I was walking about 106 kilos. Were you? Uh, oh, no. Uh, like, Big boy. Uh, I, I, <laughs> mate, I took it to the extreme. Like, it was mad how much I put in it and how yeah. much I didn't go to it as well. Um, but I just didn't enjoy it in the end mm. again. Um, and I found myself starting, starting CrossFit when I was in Bali last year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I hear CrossFit's quite, quite, obviously it's popular all over the world. Um so Bali, there's a few like popular CrossFit boxes, or the, most of the most of the fitness places have that built into the gyms. Yep. Um, what's that experience like? Is your first time going to that? Humbled, <laughs> absolutely humbled. Really? Ah, like you think, see, because you're like you obviously you train, you look good, you think you're fit, ah, you're not fit. Yeah, it's, it's different. You just don't look your fit. Mm. Um, but I love that because there's in CrossFit, there's so many things to learn. Like you got to be a you got to be a gymnast, you got to be an Olympic weightlifter, you got to be also fit for the other cardio metcon kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many things that go into it, mm. and that's what I was like. I could keep chasing this and keep learning stuff, this kind of stuff. Started scratching the itch of like, aye, aye, this, much. like more competitive. And I'm you look at these guys going, right, the massive look good, but they can also do all this other cool stuff. Mm. And I was like, oh, I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I carried it on when I got home. So once I got home, it's a CrossFit gym, I started it, and I started just to keep chasing that yeah. basically. Um, and kind of walked away from sort of aesthetic kind of side. Still wanted to obviously. Yeah. Look, look the part what did it. you see in terms of changes to your aesthetics? Did you feel much changing? Um, so I had to downsize quite a lot, but right. I wanted to. Mm. It was never, an, oh, I wanted this to get, to get no, no smaller, but I downsized a bit. Um, but I actually be able to use that as well, because yeah. the Olympic weightlifting kind of stuff, it's dead, dead technical. Mm-hmm. So, and we like your body building stuff, you're, it's kind of like slow, kind of press and stuff like that. But you've got to be like kind of, fast and kind of jerky with the bar and stuff like that in CrossFit so it was more kind of swap more to using what I've built for different reasons kind of yeah thing. like explosiveness and that aye, sort of stuff much, yeah. aye, aye. so when d- do you hand your notice in to like yep. quit yep like so whilst, I, so whilst like whilst I was cutting here I was I started studying um doing a kind of finance route all right okay um because I was always interested in it but I never really knew how to kind of go about it what was it like you just like from a like what type of job was it you were trying to chase? I didn't really know. Just I just knew I wanted to work in got like this kind of banking, finance kind of really? stuff. Oh, I, okay. I just I just can't I always wanted to, but like I say when I left and I went and it like the chase. Just get roped into I, I thought I well I didn't need kind of day hires and stuff yeah. or whatever. So I thought I don't know what happened. But you then almost I, you almost feel like when you leave that early in high school. It's like, ah, I can't go into further education That's anymore. I know. It took me to 27 years old before I pursued my PT. Oh. And I get caught up in all the corporate world and all that sort of stuff. And I was just thinking, right, it's a job for life. That's right. what I need to do. Yeah. Um, and I think COVID for a lot of people seems to be the turning point of, 100%. the fuck have we done with our lives? <laughs> like, give yourself a shake. Aye, 100%. Yeah. So you, what do you do to pursue this career in finance or banking or whatever what is it you're doing so I started to kind of enrol in different courses and stuff like that um, I did a year at a, a like online kind of uni thing mm-hmm. so I did like a, like a maths a maths diploma and stuff like that. I did a bit of computer science as well um, so I managed to pass all the distinctions I got mm-hmm. distinctions in all of them and then now I study just now at London sorry London Institute of Bank and Finance so right. I'm down there studying um, kind of like wealth management, asset management. Kind of so it's going to ask those like right, stuff. Cool, right. Yep, so that's the kind of route I'm going to do now. Yeah. Um, so I'm just about to set all my financial law and regulation exams. Class. Um, so they're coming up. Yeah. So this is pursuing. This is like the career that. Yep. Uh, wait, see, when you're traveling, is that what makes you go? You know what? I'm going to do this more, or yep, I, is it? Is it simply yeah, that? Yeah. yeah and did you quit your? Um, Cutting hair and barbering, yep. that sort of stuff. Aye, then, aye, just simply like walk away from it. Then, yeah, I don't know. scary or anything like that. No, do you just nah, I don't laser know. focus? I don't, really, like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I really thought about it too much. No. <laughs> that was it. And it just, yeah. 
So right. what? And where, where are you in the in the timeline here? What age are you? Is this just this is recent? Last year. Isn't it? Uh, it was last year. Uh-huh. So you do this, and you've have you found like competitive training yet with like sports? Mm-hmm. So I was like, what I what I chase the kind of CrossFit stuff, and then I was never a runner. That's the thing. I've I always get asked, "What's your running background?" I was like, "I don't have one." Mm. Like I remember running my first five k last. I don't even know exactly when, but it was like May, June mm-hmm. of last year. I was like, once I came, I had to go back to CrossFit. Yeah, like, oh, I need to get my endurance. Aye, so like, let's, let's try and be a runner. Like I said, I was a, I was a big guy trying to run. And I remember <laughs> my first 5k was 27 minutes. Was it? 27 minutes. This was last year. You just done a 16k, 16, 16 minutes, 5k? Minutes. Aye. That's insane. That is wild. <laughs> that is wild. We'll talk about the actual training uh, that in, in a wee sec. So you're doing CrossFit. Are you wanting to compete in CrossFit then? Because uh-huh. it's almost like if you go to a boxing gym, they're like, here, do you want to fight? It's uh, like you're in a CrossFit uh, gym. It's like, who should compete? So w- w- do you do a competition? I never did. No? No. no. I was I was never a good Olympic weightlifter. Right. I, was just, I was just never good. At, like, <laughs> the gymnastics and stuff like that, I picked it up very, very quickly. Mm. Like handstand, all the other yeah. mad stuff you see in yeah. videos of CrossFit, I could do all that quite quick. But I, could, I was never... I could do the, like, the technique wise, I was fine, but see, try to put like a nice, kilos nice, above, yeah. above your head in a snatch. Just gonna get it. Couldn't do it. No, mm. I couldn't do it. Um, and somebody I knew was doing, I, had, I started thinking about high rocks, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a runner. Like, uh, I'm just not a runner. I've always been a weightlifter. And somebody I knew was going to, to do one in Birmingham just last year, literally just over a year ago, in right. October last year. And I was like, I'll come with and do one. So I managed to get a ticket off Facebook like two weeks before the event. I mean, doing my knee prep, like, didn't even <laughs> think about it. I just, I've just got to go down and just do this. There's a theme here. <laughs> just going for it. I just, just going for it. I, like, uh, why not? Uh, and I went down there and I got third place. Mm. And I was like, just got a podium, my first high rocks. And I didn't even. What was your time? Uh, it was an open, so it wasn't a pro, it was open. And I got one hour and seven minutes. That's wild, isn't it? First, uh, the first one. So that's, that's crazy. Got my first, first high The solo? Yeah. Right. Cool. Yep. What was the hardest part of the whole race? The first one. Mm-hmm. Was, running, it, was it the running? Aye, probably, aye. Because like I say, I, I think I'd even ran 8k. <laughs> I don't, honestly, I don't think I did. No, I mean, didn't like that. So I wonder, where do you think your conditioning element for that came from? Do you think it was just years of callus being built up with doing wads, emoms, aye, so like, different style of I training? Was, I wasn't a runner fit, but I was like erg fit. So mm-hmm. like I was always smashing roars and skiers and stuff like that. And obviously when I was doing crossfit. And like you're doing, you're, there's a lot of short, sharp Fast stuff in CrossFit. There's no, it's no, never really long, mm-hmm. but like, like a, some some stuff like seven minute arm wraps. Mm. It's like dead dead short, but it's fast. Aye, Maybe like a few names. So you're That's building that sort of like power output. Aye, and like that kind of threshold ability, but you're, but not, not for very long. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how I was sort of fit enough to to do that time, I suppose. Mm. And I, like I say, I was strong. That's wild for your first time. Yeah, <laughs> that's cra- yeah. Uh, crazy. <laughs> so you do that, and then is that that it? I was it's like, like I'm this. locked in. I am going to be an athlete. <laughs> I like this. I like CrossFit. Lean, lean. Where does your mate place? What's that? Where does your mate place? Who was going down? Uh, I can't even mind. I can't. I can't. I can't even so you must uh, must be fucking mental from him. It's like you just signed up to this last minute. I've been training for this. Uh, I see them one uh, like in Glasgow, like last year. Also, right. maybe six months before it or something like that. Mm. This was like the second one doing it, and then I went and just, just went for it. That, uh, Good. So this is where the bug starts then. Aye. Um at your point of training then, so CrossFit seems to be the answer to this functional or hybrid, whatever you want to kind of class it as. But I guess you're no hybrid yet because you've not started the run. But you come away from this event um, and where's, where's, what's going through your mind? Like, Is it like, I want to be, I'm going to find out more about this sport now? So I'll have a number one. Aye. Like, it's just for the end I do it, I need to be number one. Right. Like, it's just, it's just the way I'm, I don't care what it is. So you obviously start reading up. Did you know about the Elite 15 and all that sort of stuff at this oh, point? I didn't right, know, cool. knew nothing about it. So you start... I didn't, didn't know, I, didn't, I didn't even know like MD I was doing. Like Hydrox, like Hydrox became massive. Obviously, it's massive this, this year. year. It's I, only this year. This year. Mm-hmm. So like that was only that the end of last year, and even to then, be, uh, the, the, I, I think didn't the know end, of, was doing uh, it. Uh, end of last year it started to pick up the pace because mm-hmm. um, we booked it. We booked our first one in December, and it was only because it was getting up to Christmas, and Jill was like, "What do we want together?" And I was like, "Yeah, why not?" So we picked Madrid in right. February, right. and um, since then, it's like one of those things like. The yellow car theory, so like you don't see a yellow car until you're driving one. It's like GTA, like uh, you jump yeah. in the car and you're like, it's fucking honours of these cars. So I don't know if it's just that's an element, but it definitely is way more popular now. Oh, it's, and it's, it's, it's only getting compounding. Bigger. It's only getting bigger compounding. Well. Ah, it's yeah. massive. So you're jumping on this where the wave is relatively low. And what's funny, like, what an hour six was like podium 
or an hour or whatever it was. I thought it was third. Was third. Was third. I, I think the guy that won it got like 104. Like oh, did he? Four, aye, so like... <laughs> wild. Absolutely the, even wild. Even the standards. It's crazy. Races in a year is ridiculous. Yeah, like, so I was I, looking at Manchester's uh, just this past weekend. Um, the top 200 places for men's doubles yep. is under an hour five. Yeah, <laughs> 200. It's standards. And it's crazy. It's and I'm thinking, oh, if I get under an hour 10, I'll be... I'll be I'll be cool. I'll be uh, in the top, the top percentile. Uh, and you're like, no, nope, not in, uh, not anymore. Honestly, but that's the way sports goes, isn't it? Uh, of course, you got to keep moving, mate. Mm. Now, did was there any part of you that was like, fuck this high rocks type of stuff? Like, there's a obviously there's for whatever reason, same with CrossFit. Like, people love it or they hate it. Mm. Same with bodybuilding, you love it or they hate it. Um, were you like appreh- apprehensive before it, or was it? Did you look at it and like, hmm, this would be quite cool to do a, an actual fitness race? I, I was. I thought it was quite cool. I, wanted to keep, I didn't really know how to train for it. That mm. was the thing as well. So, like, I was just seeing these mad sessions on Instagram. So I was like, I could do that. I'll do that. And I was just like, my, seeing I look back on my training, like, kind of January, February this year, mm. going, why was I doing that? Like, it was just crazy. I was getting injured every week. Yeah. It was just. Uh, there was a lot of lessons for the last season, oh, I guess. Uh, which, will, which will come in. So, uh, let's, so, Birmingham's where you start to finish up yep. or where you get the, the hook for it. Yep. Where do you go training wise from there? Like, what happens after that then? Um, so, straight away, I booked the European Championships. <laughs> straight after that, I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. So, I booked that. That was in, that was in February mm. this year in Vienna. Um, I didn't end up competing it. Like I said, I was just getting injured. So, right. I couldn't, I didn't, didn't end up competing in it. Or did, or did you, I didn't realise that's where the. What, what do you mean the championships? What what was that? It's a Europe, European one. Ah, right. So, they split right, instead to, of the Worlds or whatever. I, right, I, right, so cool, you can cool. just, so they're open as well, so they're not pro. Um, so MD can just sign up to it. So I signed up to that and I got injured too badly and I was right. like, so they had to pull out. Um, so that was in February this year. So like I, so then I trained for October to Feb, like try to train into February. And, w- and what's your training looking like? Because you, do you get a coach or do you start? No, no, no you so start. Just like, aye. I was just what, like, what is everyone else doing? And I'll do a double. That. I'll do a double. That. <laughs> Honestly, that was that's just. I thought like, that is a truth. Like I, everything. So I was like, but I was also like I say I was never a runner. So I was like, mm. right, I need I need really fast and good at running. Keep this strength I've got, but build like the power output side mm-hmm. of it as well, and the threshold ability. So I was just like running, like I'm not kidding, right? Every Monday I used to run a half marathon. <laughs> Did you? I swear, right? Every Monday I'd run a half marathon. It was like trail as well. Yeah. It was like rocks and stuff. So the like, terrain smart, is absolutely you know, ruining your ankles. Ruining your ankles and <laughs> that, right? So like every Monday without fail, half marathon, and then like I train again the, ju- uh, the Monday. So I train twice that day. <laughs> Double training, right? And then <coughs> Excuse me. All week I do like. I'm not kidding, 90 minute arm wraps. It's just like, basically, I used to do high roxies was easy for me. Cause I was doing like double high roxies five times a week. And here, like, seeing in your defence, it makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, I, oh, if I do all this hard stuff, thought, the high roxies going to be easier. I, I thought I need to train yeah. harder and fat. Like, and have you injured yourself at all at this point? Oh, I. Every, like before this, before no, you started uh, this no, training, no. I see you're like naive to it. It's like a bodybuilding, like intensity. There is obviously injuries that can happen. Yep. Um, CrossFit, there's obviously more risk with the more that you do. But this is like here, I'm resilient as anything. Aye. I can, I can Aye. send this. Aye. What was the first injury then? Yeah, I started to get a little niggle with my knees. Right, that was the first. I've for young, I've had ball off with my knees, and I was young. Um, my hips are slightly out of line as well, mm. so. They won all the minute half marathons you've been aye. doing up so, the mountains. <laughs> aye, pretty much. <laughs> uh, aye, so that, and then, so that's always put pressure on my knees and stuff like that as well. Right. Um, so I was just, like I say, I was getting injured every week and I thought, right, so I really need to change here. And, and you're then, just pushing through the pain at this point, it, aye. right? Aye. Can you remember, like, did you do any testing to see where your baseline runs were at? I guess, where was your runs for um, the first high rocks, you know, your splits or so anything So I was averaging... Like that? I think I averaged about 430, 440. Right, so pretty strong. Like, aye, so coming into it reasonably good, strong. Aye. Yeah. Yep. It was about four, aye, roughly 430, 440 every split. And it's so funny, like speaking to someone who, like even myself, never a runner up until this year. I, that's a lie. I was I ran in high school. I liked running, but then I wanted to just add size on, very similar to you. But at no point back in the day was training anything about threshold training, splits, um, Long and slow, like slow and steady, like so there's so many like uh, acronyms that come into the running space that obviously you don't know this thing. You're just like, I'm going to hammer it. But did you know? Did you set any baseline numbers of what you wanted to do? No, was, just, was it just run hard and long? Running hard, long, fast. Right. Like just. What was your total? Can you remember any like total volume for your for the week? Aye. Must have been ninety k, hundred k a week. <laughs> Straight in it. Swear. Aye, like, <laughs> on top of ninety minute. I'm not. Aye, like, aye. 
mm. smashing. I was like I say, I was doing double high rocks <laughs> a few times a week. So in fairness, your body would have yes, it starts to break down, the injuries start to come out, but also you do get some sort of gain from that. I would, I would imagine because you're a strong runner now, Aye. and it might not have been solely because of that, but. I almost feel like it sounds like that needed to happen to Aye. get you running more efficient. A hundred percent. What? Um, when do you start getting better at training? Uh, after World Championships this year. Oh, is that is that what? I because you you actually had a, but you're thinking about that as well, didn't I you? Have a, I've had a few <laughs> of them. Aye. I've had a few of them last season. Yeah. So after uh, Europeans, which I didn't compete in, I competed in Glasgow, High Rocks mm. in March this year. First, so on the European, what was the reason for pulling out of that? I had so much pain. So much pain, right? Like, it was ridiculous. Right. Um, so I just had to pull it all together. Yeah. Do you fly out? Do you go? No. Nah. I just, just don't, don't want to see MD. Nah. <laughs> I was like, like I say, I need to be number one. Mm. And I was like, if I go out there, I know for a fact I'm not going to be number one out there. Yeah, because you're coming off a third place. Uh, yeah. In a, in yeah, a sense, you got the momentum back to your boxing days. Jane, is ever a fear of that first loss again? Like creep my bit in there, and that's how you're like, no, nah, can't happen, I need can't happen. Wiser, so, I need, aye. so pull out uh, Vienna. Yep. You have you created any sort of traction in the space yet? Are people no. getting to know who you are and all that sort of stuff. But an underdog still. Aye, right, I was. Cool. Aye, Nave Nave really knew who I was basically. Mm. So then, like I said, I was competing in Glasgow back in March. Is that where your debut was going to be? Because it's a hometown, home turf, and all aye, that. I'll win this. I'll be top boy. Aye, that was basically that. And and my thing is, I never get nervous, right? I get excited, mm. which is probably equal, it's the same feeling. Aye, it's the same feeling, equal, right? Yeah. So, and I done my mates there. My mate was competing. I knew people that was there as well. So like, oh, you got a day well, and I was, I was like, jump about mental. I was there like five years before I was competing. <laughs> like I was just there all day so long. So an adrenaline aye, buzz. Aye, I should, shouldn't have done that, but I was just buzzing about, mm -hmm. and I went out so fast. I've, I've done it anyway. Yeah. First run. I've done it because it too fast. Done it far too fast. I, 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 had a, I had a game plan in my head, like what splits I was going to hit. Right. Abandoned that. Done. What was it? What was it supposed to be? I thought I'd barely hit like because I was so I, I ran like four forties for my first run. I thought if I can hit like kind of like a four minute kind of mark, I'd right. be happy with that. A good time to. Went a three thirty the first one. <laughs> <laughs> totally abandoned had that. you ever ran a three thirty no, at this point? No, no, never, right, never, yeah. never. Uh, and then I done. And on the ski, he was skiing like probably faster than some elite 15 guys that, like, to begin with, and then like <laughs> yeah. I died straight away. Yeah. And Is that where the crash happened? It was after the sled push. Right, okay. So then that run again, but I was like. Is this a pro you entered into? No, this is open. Right, right. It's cool. open. Cool. Aye, so this is open. And then I got to the sled, I couldn't move it. My body was just wiped out, and I was like, yep. I can't even move this sled. And eventually I finished it, going to the run, and I just dropped. Did you? I just dropped it cold. Did you pass out? I completely. I'd rather, I kind of like, I kind of come off the track a bit, like at the side, because I knew. Body's crazy. crashing. Aye, aye, basically, yeah. aye. So I kind of come at the side, and then I kind of went down to one knee, but it was like the chest pain I had at the time, and mm. I, tr I just dropped in. And Do you like, remember your heart rate or anything like that? What was that? It Spiked was it? Two, I it? Oh, what was it? It was like 280. Was it? Was it? It was something crazy. Fucking hell. I wear a monitor as well, so it's mm. like more accurate than. Mm, the watch, watch. Uh, it's also still whatever, but it, uh, so it's a bit that. So you crash. Yep. You wake up. What's happening when you're waking up? I was just running about me. Like uh, I think I was, I was, I'm sure it was about six minutes or something. Mm. I was no it was cold, but I was like, come off there for six minutes. And the guy was like, the paramedics are coming and all that, and I was like, in my head I'm like, I can't even finish this. <laughs> and it was probably the, it's the worst thing you could do. Yeah. I go back up and start running again. Did they try and no stop you or anything yeah, like that? Yeah. Did you just run away from them? Away from them. And I was like, I, I, I don't know, mate. I don't know why I done it. Right, but I just got up and just went, and I was like, I was going a little slow, but I was there again, mate. Yeah. And then I finished. That was that was like that was a third, uh, third run. So it was only like about fifteen minutes into the, into the last run, mm. maybe something about that. I don't know what it is. Any gauging your paces after that, or is it you just? Yeah, is it just get this finished? Run to feel. Run to right. what I could. What right. I could do to be honest, to finish it. Aye. Aye. And. I got to the finish line and like my family were that and they were there and I came off raging. But no, no, you done well. They, they didn't know what happened. That was the thing. They didn't know what I was going to say that right, because because it's busy. It's busy and sometimes you're like, like somebody leaves the station. You're waiting them to come in the next station. You start getting a bit panicky if you don't see them. So you're like, if they collapse around that track or if they 
maybe missed a lap or they've missed the station or whatever it is. Um, so you're out and they just think that's a slower run aye, that you've had. Much, right? like, <laughs> a 12 minute quarter or something like that. <laughs> Walks by. Um, and I didn't know until I finished. Right. So I went there and I'm like, oh, you done well in that. Like, just, I think you just thought, I did the days well as what I thought. And I was like, I just collapsed in my third run. And they were like, they were going mental away. Really? Finishing it. Yeah. Um, but aye, I was... So what's the what was the lesson that you took away from that? Like what was the, the things like if you had to go back and redo that day? I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know what I don't know what I, I don't know. I actually honestly don't know. Um I went too quick to begin with. I think I thought I was better than what I was at the time as well. Um like I say, I was just number one, number one in my head. Yeah. But it's a lesson in it. Aye, you need <laughs> you know, to take aye. it. So were you were you heartbroken aye. to the sense where did that give you fire to train harder and train smarter? Yeah. Right. So then, Smith that a wee bit. Then I, I so after that one, I then I need to race again. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't deal with that. So it's like, where's the next race? Where's the next race? So I think before you go into the next race, what was your time in Glasgow? One hour and seven minutes. Right, again. So, you, so same time aye. as Birmingham. So you got the same time as Birmingham. You also collapsed, woke up, and then just sort of went for it, <laughs> which is. I mean, some people are like, man, that is crazy, but at the same time, you're probably going, that ah, was a wee bit stupid, aye, until looking back, should have done that. Um, now, I guess this is maybe the thing with youth on your side and the training experience that you've had, that's where, when you look back, you're like, ah, my training's ridiculous, I shouldn't have done that, but in a sense, that's probably what saved you for some of for, for being able to bounce back with that. Um, is that the worst thing that's ever happened at an event? Aye. Is it the worst? It's obviously not an injury, it's like... I've had worse injuries, aye. Going to that minute, but I've had like worse injuries since then. Mm-hmm. But like mentally, aye, that was that was definitely the worst, mm. worst I've experienced. Now, but did you feel embarrassed? Aye, aye. Did you? Aye, because there's people on after it. Like so, we're there. Like I was in Gavin first. To everybody that I knew was there, and like people are coming. Oh, how'd you go? And how'd you go? And like, I don't want to speak of it. I don't want to speak of it. It's the it. same story over aye, and, and over. I repeat myself. I was like, oh, get me here. <laughs> <laughs> did you leave? Did you stick about? Yeah, uh, I stuck about to the end to, mm. to watch everything else. Um, mm. I stuck, stuck about until everything else finished, but I was like, I need to get here. <laughs> so this is obviously where you start getting in the crowd of um, the High Rocks athletes and that sort of stuff, guys who are trying to go for first place podium, be the best in the sport and that sort of stuff. Um, is that why you're maybe a wee bit like heart felt, felt from it? Because you're like... I like I failed, to be honest. Uh, I think, that was, I, think I've, I've failed what I've set out today. Um... Like I was saying, I'd, I was like, I need to race again. So check where's the next race, and there was one in Germany. Like, Is that the same night? The same night. Was it? I booked it that night. <laughs> Lovely going Hamburg. Uh, I think it was, was it week? no, two. It was two weeks. Two weeks later, I was like, I oh, that was that. Uh, two, so two weeks again that day, I was racing in Germany. So I booked it. And I was like, I'm gonna race in Germany. There was a place called Karlsruhe. I've never heard that. Right. I never heard that. Um, MDS spoke to. Never heard that. <laughs> it's like some random. I think I was like, there was so. Only a few people from Britain that was there. Right. It was mobbed with like German right. guys and that, but it was hardly MD from Britain was there. Mm. And so I went into Germany two weeks later um, and I won that one. Mm-hmm. So. The race on the lead up to that though, what's going through your mind on what you have to do training wise? Did you feel like you were fit enough and it was just, or were you just saying to yourself, you started too hot so you just need to scale that back? Was that as simple as where you were? I was deaf. I'm, I was, I'm definitely ready. Because like like I, like I knew I was on for a good I was on, I knew I was on for a good time mm-hmm. after that had happened, um, so I was like right, I'm definitely ready. I just need like probably mentally prepared for it. I think I think that's probably more um, mm-hmm. what it was. So I went there. Like I said, done that. Qualified for our world. Did you go yourself? No, my granddad came in. Oh, did he? Ah, yeah, oh, he, so I phoned him. I was like, listen, <laughs> short notice now, but I'm going to Germany next uh, t- two weeks. So I comes. Like, I'll come. So we went there. He's like, oh, what the fuck's going on here? Aye, aye, come aye, on. Aye. <laughs> Funny as in. So. And timings for that one? Like, did you? 62. Right, so, so it's kind of proved that the training that you've done in the lead up to that, you're onto something, you're getting better, you're getting more efficient. Um, different races, obviously different scores in that. Are you Have you clocked on to this yet? Or are you just like, a time's a time, I need to beat the time type of thing? Aye, it's just like, oh, I need to be better, I need to be better this. Um, so that redeem that. yourself a wee bit there? I did. I, did, I, 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 needed, that, I needed that quite early on as well, because it's, it's probably relating back to the boxing, like when I suffered that first loss. Horrendous yeah. loss. I, um, I was like, I could have reacted the same, and like, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just walked away with it. But anything is it ever creeped into your mind that 
to walk away from the sport? Um, aye. Is it? I'd say so. It has aye. Because um, then after Germany, so that qualification World Championships, which was only six weeks, or six, six to eight, I can't mean, six, yeah. I mean exactly, but it was like March. Short window, yeah. Aye, something like that. This was obviously pro races at, in World Championships. I'd never done a pro race before. I think I'd even touched a nine kilo ball in my life <laughs> up until this point. So again, I was like, I need to smash training. So I was still in this stupid, stupid mindset that my and my and my and my and my is better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I started to doubt myself. I don't know what it was as well. Like, I think off the back of Glasgow and that as well. Although I'd like, won this one in Germany, I still, I then started to doubt myself. Like, nah, I'm not ready for this shit. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm decent, I'm good at it, but I'm no, I'm never, never near the top. And then, my mate, he, he's running like ultra and stuff like that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was running his first one. So it was up in Loch Ness. It was a full oh, lap. Who's that? Um, uh, what's his name? Nathan Gardner. Nathan, aye. 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 So it was a full lap at Loch Ness. Mm-hmm. So it was a two-day event. So 60 kilometres on the Saturday mm-hmm. and 50 on the Sunday. Yeah, you jumped in on it, didn't you? <laughs> a week, I, I booked it again a week before it. Like, this is just, it was just a, a theme that I was like, don't need to change. <laughs> <laughs> the longest I'd ever ran was a half marathon. Right. Which is twenty one k. It was maybe fifty kilometers. Turned it like near enough sixty that day. Like I was, Just of I was looking my watch. I, mean, I was looking my watch. Going, I'm at fifty four kilometers. <laughs> this is meant still, to be finished. I'm, I'm still on this mountain. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I fell because it was, so it was all trails. Yeah, it's, this, it's, it's a different game. I it's just no, it's it's no, no road marathon or paths to I, whatever. So yeah, the elevation. I'm sure it worked out the total elevation for that day. I, so I, I did the Sunday, I, I didn't do the both days, I did the Sunday, mm-hmm. the 50 kilometres, but meant to be 50 kilometres. Um, that elevation worked out to be four times the height of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> like, just like, up. Way up in the clouds, <laughs> can't even see it. Like, aye. Wild. Um, and you do this, what, a week before? Like, is this in the middle? So this was in this middle. Of, this was so this is between the worlds and this was in the middle last of May, event? Right. In the middle of May, and the world just started June. Right. You just think this is going to be just a training day ah, for me. Like, yeah. Easy. Went out because of how rocking. Again, I never had. I didn't, I didn't have the gear. Like I just couldn't <laughs> done it. I had like a pair of Nikes on. I had, I had a pair of, you know, had a pair of foamy hawkers on that I'd run a ten k PB in. I ran a, I ran, I ran a thirty five k ten k. Eh, sorry, thirty five minutes. Sorry, thirty five minute ten k mm-hmm. in these shoes and then done a and then a sixty kilometer <laughs> ultra trail marathon in these. Uh, it's like something's so, not happening. Something's not right. Aye. So I end up falling like. 10k in, mm-hmm. sort of wrecked my ankle, but I didn't know what to tell Nathan, because he was mm-hmm. all hurting for the day before, Yeah, I just kept it quiet, and I swear I was hobbling, really? a full day, this was like six and a half hours that it took us to complete mm-hmm. it, I hobbled a full day out. If you, I take it, grown up and that sort of stuff, you kind of paid attention to like David Goggins and all that, do you think that plays in your mind, you're aye. like, oh, I need to be this animal, aye, like, this beast? Ah, you see it and you're like, aye. I don't know, I think it's just, it's in your it's no, yeah. I think, to be honest. Um, do you think? Do you think it is in everyone though, and you just need to develop it? Because talking through your story so far, like you're in a world where you learn fighting or you learn boxing. Sorry, you're hitting the bag, and then it's like right, work on this skill. Can I do this skill yet? You get better at the skill, then you're in the ring, you're fighting against someone else, or you're sparring. You're like, I'm getting better and better, and that's like little calluses that are built up in your mind. And I think everyone's got that ability. You've just been exposed to it more, but. The, old, the older we get in life, that doubt starts to creep in. For whatever reason, at the age of twenty, we're like, oh, "I'm not, I'm not a hot shot anymore." Like, what the hell? Where, why is that, Why am I getting nervous about uh, some things? Like, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, so, ultra marathon, you hurt your ankle. Mm-hmm. What's What's happened next? Do you, have you tried physiotherapy or rehab or mobility or are you doing so, anything? So like I was this? seeing somebody for my knee back in um, February when I had the first um, knee injury. It pulled me out. Uh, Europeans. Um, oh, so you did get you did get physio for that. Aye, aye. So then I was. And what was the cause? Was it just like yeah, you're overdoing this? Just, just was that real? I just just been stupid. <laughs> it's like self inflicted, basically. Aye. What was it like? Just inflammation. I, then, can't, I can't even mind. It was end up. I'd like. No x-rays, but I had like different stuff done in it and mm. I was starting to do some serious damage to like my knees and stuff like that because mm. I was still doing these stupid half marathons every week. <coughs> so I was injured going into world championships mm-hmm. but I was still smashing my training because I thought it's a first pro race, I need to, you know, you're not going to get any better in that short space of time. But in my head I was like, I'm going to go for another touch on it. 
you've been the best in the world yeah. at it. So are you thinking? Are you thinking you want to podium at this point? I was like, right. I'm going for this, aye. And then I went, I went out. So when I got to France. Mm-hmm. So then I was in Nice and France sorry, this year in June. I hadn't ran since that ultra because I was, like I said, I was in so much like really bad pain with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought I've qualified it and I've I've made it there, so I'm going to go. I got there to France and like I said, I hadn't ran for maybe a month or something at this point. Yeah. Um, I was like, I'll go and do like a wee kind of 5k easy run to get there. I stopped after 500 metres. Did you? Was I, it painful? The pain was horrendous. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's, just not, it's just not here for me. But I thought, if I can do, if, sorry, if I can like the adrenaline, I thought, Shh, I can mask it, mask it for an hour, something like that. Mm. Um, and I went out on the Saturday and the first two runs or something, I was like, felt fine. There was no pain at all. Um, so I got to the sled push. I was going to say, is there'll be the sled push because that Aye. ankle's loaded. Aye. So then I got out, back on the run, and it wasn't even like, when you hurt yourself, like, you then go down. It was like, something come behind me and just like, Aye, kick, just kicking at the flare or something. Like, I just floored straight away. My knee was like, my knee came out and everything. Like, it totally wrecked my knee to bits. Oh, really? Aye. Like, it was wrecked to bits. Mm. And I was just lying in the flare, like, green and all. Like, I was Aye. just, I was just, Pain. Aye. Was it from pain or Jenkins? It was just for the build up of both. Hundred percent both. Aye. Um, again, I felt like I'd like fail that again. <laughs> like mm. I, that was like I say third on the third one. So again, maybe only fifty. It seems to be the third one. I don't know what it is. This slide push. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think I know where you're trading. Ah, I know, I it. <laughs> and uh, I go back up and finish that. Mm. So I think that was maybe. Are you hobbling through it? I remember seeing some videos and that. It's like just so just getting through the race. It went an hour and 40 minutes right. to finish that race. Mm-hmm. So, and so I started it off like under four minute kilometres. Mm-hmm. Towards the end, I was like 15, 16 minutes. Right. Like just hobbling stopping. through it. And like I need to actually stop completely. And Why was it important for you to finish it? I just can't do so. I can't start something and like no finish it. I don't know. I, I think it would just destroy. I think it would make me feel even worse mm. if I went all the way to there and didn't finish that. Because like, I need to finish this from even for like MDLs or mm. proofs on the MDL. I, that doesn't. I don't. I don't think, I don't think like that. Mm. It was myself. Like I need to do this for for me basically. Um, so I'm glad I finished that because it sort of kind of kept me all right. Like in the heat in that, but mm. the pain after it was absolutely horrendous. Aye. Aye. You've raced the next day as well, didn't you? Next day yeah. as well. So a guy that I met basically met on Instagram, but never spoke before. Mm. His partner pulled it, mm-hmm. and then this is before um, I got there. This is only a couple of weeks before. I was like, I, I'll, I'll, I'll date with you. So I was like, I kind of let this guy down because he literally flew there just for that one. So doubles race on mm-hmm. Sunday. So I raced solid Saturday and doubles on Sunday. I, like, I kind of let this guy down, and he, was, he texted me. He was like, Mate, listen, it's totally understandable. Like you're, you're wrecked. <laughs> I was like, you can't. I was like, I didn't. I was like, nah, I'm not letting you down. Mm-hmm. So we went out there and I raced again with this knee hanging to bits. Just taped. I, had, I went to the physio in the morning and. It's just like tape for the air all the way down, <laughs> hanging it's all a prosthetic and, leg. <laughs> oh, I was. And then like, yeah. Smell like deep heat and tiger bar and <laughs> coming off it, honestly. Um, so I managed to finish it. I managed mm. to do it and finish it. Mm. And then I was just wrecked. Mm. So I, I then took off the next couple of months. Um, and what was the game plan during this period of time? Learn how to actually properly train. Mm. Um, Who do you start learning from? Where does that... Who are you sort of watching in the space? And I started to kind of look at right. We're done. What what do I need to be? I need to be a good runner. I need to be a good weight lifter. I need, I need all these different things. Right, you can't do them all. Because especially can't do them all at once. Mm. You kind of have this peak intensity. Also run long distances. Also do like max kind of run at max, three rep max for last whatever. And then like learn like training blocks, splitting into like kind of four feet blocks, six feet blocks, whatever. And then like working on things individually, building up into this intensity that you mm. need. Started to really, really delve into like Ironman, triathlon, endurance training. Mm-hmm. So I was doing a lot of that to begin with after Worlds. And what does that look like? Was it? A lot of biking. Lot that was the things I, I couldn't really run at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like tons and tons and tons of biking. As I, as I got better, I started to put in like lifting and stuff like that again, yeah. squats and stuff. Are you biking out in the roads or in the gym? In the gym. In the gym? In the gym, aye. Good. I used to cross train quite a lot as well. Mm. Uh, I was doing like just what could move your body without pain free, pain. yeah, pain free basically. Low impact, longer and longer cardio basically, mm. um, to sort of build that endurance base. Mm. So 
I was smashing hours and hours and hours and a week at that, and then I got kind of started getting better and better. I was like, I, I, I did want to race again this year, so then I booked up um, Poland, Poznan, mm. um, and that was just after that weekend there. So I had like eighteen weeks to from Worlds till then. Mm. So then I started like learning like train blocks, like. Of like Hunter McIntyre, yeah. like guy the best. Reverse engineer it. Uh huh. So I was like, yeah, I can do this for this kind of period of time. Then like once I've done that, and then moving to this mm-hmm. chain phase block, moving to that, moving to that. That was a game changer for me and my performance as well. Like, yeah. What what, what did you? What happens in terms of numbers? Then what have you saw? Obviously, we'll talk about your times that you uh-huh. ended up getting. Cause that's what the ultimate sort of goal is that you're uh, trying to change. But where do you see your running going? Like, what's what's improving there? So the best thing I've done is cut out long runs mm. all together. And I still don't do them. I haven't done a long run. Would you call? Would you class as a long run though? You were doing half marathons. <laughs> it's probably just like an hour plus. Anything over an hour. An hour plus, I'd mm. say. I never. I don't even go out runs anymore at all. Like I've never. I don't even run outside anymore. Just, Unless it's a track. I got track runs. Track, I but I, I don't do it anymore. Right. I always do my longer like endurance stuff: bikes, cross trainers, ergs. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuff like that. And what's the long endurance stuff on that? Like, I do a lot of brick runs now as well. I do quite a lot of that. It's so like maybe an hour, an hour bike, straight an hour run, or like 90 minutes in the bike, or just like stuff like that, just kind of low impact. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was the best thing I've done is totally cut that out. That allowed me to then bring more to then like my speed work track tracks and threshold stuff because you're doing like my massive long run at the start of the week. I actually wiped out for a good, uh, good few days. It, but you were doing your long runs not at a slow and steady space. You were like trying to PB your times so and then all the times I. So time. also the combination, I think, of the uh, two of them is really where the importance is there. Uh, um, so you go, you can then sit down. Um, you're doing longish runs, but nothing to the same extreme. They're slower, um, probably a wee bit more boring because you're like, I could go faster, but I need to, I need uh, to sit in this. Um, what's your threshold and your split stuff look like? Training wise, like what's what sort of made the difference there? Um, starting to so then I had to learn like kind of different like threshold stuff and like again because I don't have I don't have a running background so I had mm. to like learn how to be a runner basically. <laughs> um, so I was like running basically getting co- comfortable being uncomfortable paces so like running faster for longer so mm-hmm. like not even like distances like for minute I look like, like the, the, the just duration. the time ah, yeah, so like. Yeah. like Five minutes at a set pace, so mm-hmm. I don't know what, whether it works out distance wise, like 15 yeah. whatever it is, whether it works out is five minutes at that pace, then like get it eight minutes at that pace. So, like, what was the pace that you remember starting with? I can't even, I can't, no, I can't, yeah. I can't remember, no, but it's just like it hurt, it hurt, it hurt <laughs> aye, it still hurts, but it's just a bit faster now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just getting used to that, and then like gradually, as I'm building this bigger base mm. and this threshold ability. I'm also then getting faster and faster, and mm-hmm. then increase this to like faster splits as well. So now I'm down to like, well, I'll go to the track and run sub three minute kilometers and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I'll do like two k repeats, three k re- three k repeats, and different stuff like that. Um, it's just getting faster and faster and faster and faster. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, uh, after Worlds, my spin race after that was Amsterdam. Yeah, so that was only two weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Two, two, I think it was two weeks ago. What well, made you pick that one? If you had just test myself. No, uh, just like uh, I did a wee tester two weeks before. <laughs> oh, I don't again. Need to keep doing this. <laughs> and then that was a pro race. So mm. that's just like my proper first full pro race because what I was was just a, a total write off. Mm. That was my first full pro race. Um, so I was like, I was get there and try and see what I see what I can do. Mm. Um, I went out there and I got sixty two minutes in my first pro race. Mm-hmm. Which one one age group, mm-hmm. um, and like fifth overall or something like that. Yeah, um, so that was only two weeks ago as well. And what did you what did you find like that first pro race? Obviously, a lot of things changed with your training, and obviously being pain free is probably the, <laughs> the main thing that's allowed you to go into this fresh. Um, what was the hardest part that you feel that you like? Because you get aspirations to get to yep. to win this, to be yep. the best in the sport. Um, where do you feel your weakness is now after after doing that pro? Just the strength wise, um, <coughs> constantly building strength. Like the, the the pro sleds and that is ridiculous. Like I'll train my heavier sleds in the gym. And I still can't still can't make it. Like, <laughs> it's, um, it's funny watching all the guys. I saw Graham and uh, John 
uh, the guys in the Elite 15 in Madrid. So funny watching the guys push it and then they, they both stopped at the same time and looked at each other as if, what the fuck is on this? <laughs> so I think whatever venue ah, and event that you go to is just all different. It's always inconsistencies. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm standing two weeks before mm-hmm. your, your first uh, major event. Jenk, there was a bit within you that wanted to book Amsterdam because of the pro. Because it was a pro weight. Yep. And are you committed to like doing more pro stuff? Or I was that? Trained. I saw it. After Worlds, I only trained for pro. Aye. I was I was just like, I'm only got a day pro now. I was I didn't even plan doing open races again. Right. To be honest. Cool. Yeah. Not ever again, but just I was my focus was a pro. Oh, you want to be at the top yeah, and of course. you can do them for fun, I guess, if it's if it's the open one. Is that what they feel like now, the open rates? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, well, they're lighter, so they're faster. So mm. it's equally as hard, if not slightly harder, because you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're going faster. So you come away for that, must be a buzz then. It's like, finally, a bit of redemption, eh? 100%. <laughs> Aye. That's how that started the momentum, basically, again, for a season, pretty mm. much. So then I had Poland booked, so I had a, it was an open race I done in Poland. I had a solo on the Saturday, and I had doubles on the Sunday. So I'd booked it with somebody else, but they couldn't make the doubles anymore. So I then seen this, this guy on Instagram, Charlie Bottle, his name is. So Charlie's got every record I think there is. Oh, does he? Ah, he's, he's got the open world record for my age group. Mm-hmm. He just set a mixed doubles the day. They just set it in Manchester. In Manchester, did he? Mixed doubles, he got that British record. Um, he's got tons what was of it? Record. Uh, 54. Was it? Aye. No. Aye. Wild. Aye, it's Wild. Um, I've seen Charlie on Instagram and I was like, I always seen Charlie on Instagram I was like, I, need, I want to race with him because this guy's, this guy's mm. the best like my age. Can I? Mm. So I messaged him because I knew he was going, he was racing pro right. in Poland so I was right. like, he's going to be there anyway so I was like, I'm messaging him so I messaged him like, listen, I've got a ticket here if you're interested in that and we go back chatting back and forth I was like, I'll do it with you. So I was like, what was he like? Where's your splits? What are you doing? Where are you at? Was he like any of that? Uh, no, not really. No, no, no. I was just like, I, mean, I, tell, I told him because I knew, like, this is best. I can't even remember when agreed to do this. Maybe like six weeks ago. So before Amsterdam, I can't tell him, listen, this is what I could, I think I could probably hold. Mm-hmm. Um, we ended up doing faster than what I thought we could do, but um, I, was like, I, I can hold this. And he was like, I cool. Yeah, that's fine. So, then, so we got that booked, and I was like, that's, this is going to be really good. Um, so, so you do your solos on the Saturday? Mm-hmm. Pretty good again. Aye. Would would you did you get? Would you finish there? I finished first again. Aye. Um, I did a bit of was that an open? Just an, I was uh, open. Yeah. Aye. So I finished with fifty eight mm-hmm. minutes. I got in that fifty eight twenty. But I don't know what happened. I like I don't know even. I felt so good all week, and I got to the race. I mean, I went out. I went out fast, obviously. But during I was like, I don't feel me. I don't know. Really? Right. I don't know what happened. And I got to the sled pool and. I ended up doing five lengths. Oh, did you? Did realise that? Yeah. Done that yeah. the first time as well, you think, because you run across. Aye. Uh, so, like, cause I was, I was obviously, I was one of the stronger runners, so I was, like, beating them, and, like, guys are running, I'm like, how are they beating me in the sled? Like, I'm pulling this, because it's so light now, because mm-hmm. like, I'm racing pros mm-hmm. now. I'm pulling it, 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 I'm, like, looking, going, I swear I've done enough here. Yeah. And the guy went, oh, yeah, when you go, when you go, but I didn't even realise, I didn't realise. I'm like, I need bar. So I had to run along my lane, like over the rope and all that. <laughs> and watching these guys like finish there and run there, I'm yeah. finishing down here and run across. After pulling the, the slide as well. Right. So I've done five, <laughs> five lengths on that. <laughs> um, which almost cost me. Because mm. uh, the guy got second, was eight seconds behind me. Oh, is he? Aye. Imagine you'd be raging, wouldn't you? Aye, honestly. <laughs> second <laughs> place is only first loser oh, or something like that. First fastest loser, I know. <laughs> uh, aye, so. Aye, so so perhaps so that's it. Yeah, aye, right. aye, so I was like, right, it's a good weekend this. But I only met Charlie for the first time on the Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we quickly spoke like this is what we'll, kind of the tactic for what we'll do. You'll what was the game plan? Hot and heavy for the for the get go. I ah, just it was fast weekend. But we had like I think we split we split like the ski air, like one fifty each. Just give it aye, as strong like, pills as you can. Because I had touched the sleds. That the day before, I knew how they felt. So like, listen, they're, they're, they're pretty light. So like, right, full lengths of sleds each. Um, I think we done full, full each, and then like half, 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 basically to finish mm. it. Nice, it's an easy changeover, isn't it? Aye, aye. Um, burpees swapped every eight, stuff like that. So we had a game plan of what we're what we're going to do. But we're joking like world record. They're like, like, world record. What is a world record? Fifty minutes and. 
27, I think it is right. 27, 6. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I'm, sure I'm meant to look it up before this. Cause pretty sure it's 50, 20. No, it's 50, 24. Right. 50, 24. Right. Aye, 50, 24. So you're doing the math in your head. Mm-hmm. He's kind of know the splits that he's need to hold. Um, he's fly through this race. It's just, what was it feeling like when you're going through it? you getting excited? Horrible, man. Was it horrible, was it? Horrible. Were you in the pain cave then oh, the whole like, way? Oh, full way through. <laughs> full way through. I thought there'd be a bit, a bit where you're like, here, we are, because you're literally seconds. It's like, well, you're under under 60 seconds out with the world tight, the world. 30 seconds. Aye. So, 30, 31 seconds. And if, like, that's nothing, in the because you're looking at, you don't know if you started your watching an accurate time, but you're looking at the time going, we're on par for this world. I didn't actually, we didn't actually know. Did you know? To be honest, I didn't, I don't really tend to look at my watch. Right. Um, the only time I ever, ever looked at it, so I'll lap it, like, out, sorry, on the run track, lap. Yeah. Back run, finish run, lap. Right, so you don't do three run. <laughs> so you don't do three or one. I so. <laughs> uh, so I knew what we were running. So I only knew how fast we were running. I didn't actually know the overall time. Mm-hmm. We had splits getting th- shouted out to us as well for people that were there. So they were kind of shouting out what we were running. Mm-hmm. And then we got to the wall balls and like Charlie was in the wall balls. I, I went like that looked at my watch. It's 49 minutes. And I was like, 49 minutes about the wall balls. Mm. I was screaming at Charlie. Oh, yeah. Screaming like this. <laughs> Do not break when he's like because we're so close. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't remember exactly what what the time was with what the beat. I was, I was screaming at him to just finish it. What do you think cost you the world then, like uh, the world record? Where could you do you feel you left everything out there, or was there Only anything? One hundred percent left. Yes, couldn't have, nah, couldn't have beat that time now. No, that day. No. Nah. Now we're looking at going right. We could uh, looking back. We go right. Okay, we could have maybe ten off time there. Do the time there. Where is it? A uh, couple of state stations. Running wise, we're not going to get well. We'd probably run slightly quicker on some of them. Maybe like it was like three fifteen or three twenties were holding. Uh, we held I think the pace we held averaged about three twenty two kilometers yeah. all the way through. And if you look at like the top of the game just now, nobody's really doing runs faster than that. Nah, nah. Um, I've seen a couple of guys run close to three, mm. but the stations just rob them, and it just shows you like they're more of the runner than endurance athlete. And that's the I guess that's the beauty of the sport, isn't it? You need you yeah, can't just have one. Nah, you need nah. you do need to have it all. No. Um, so stations then for you guys, what ones? Different times like the burpees and stuff like that. Burpees, there's a time where I, I got shouted at after one of the judges because okay. so I was like we're swapping every eight burpees, right? But when you're doing it, because you're doing eight, you're going to go faster. So I was even looking in front of me. I was just like he doing that. <laughs> and then we jumped like into somebody. Oh, did you? Aye, but I didn't. Also, didn't, I wasn't uh, even watching what I was doing, right? And the judge came out scheming at me. About it. I was like. <laughs> I was actually, oh no, I'm going to get as close as this. Um, there was a few times where we get held up slightly on the runs. It was more the last two runs or something like that. Mm. Every second counts like this. It does, especially yeah. these. Where was the world record set? Oh, where was it? Do we know? I'll, I'll maybe look up while you're uh, talking. I can't even I can't remember. Um, but things like that make a huge difference when it's an empty or close. Because like, we're trying to hold. No, I'm not a guy that screams at him to get past him, right? <laughs> right. I'll I'll actually be the guy that like runs. Excuse me. You. Uh, like, I'll uh, even see him. Like, no. I'm definitely a guy that like barges in it. I, you see it all the time. You see, I know, I know. Especially they see the Spanish. <laughs> was it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is how he's got world records. Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm too nice, mate. That's it, I'm too nice. Um, there's times where he maybe we were trying to also hold that inside lane. Mm-hmm. Times where he maybe got through. I didn't. So I had to like sprint, like fully sprint, run these people to catch them and mm-hmm. slow back down. Mm-hmm. And you're doing that, you're not going to whatever's left. Aye. Um, so there's times that different, so maybe we're talking seconds here, but again, every second matters when it's only 30 seconds behind. Of course, of course. Um, what was the wall balls like then? Because that's like usually to get efficient on time, mm-hmm. it's just going for unbroken and less swap overs. Um, what was the split send up being for I that? Did, so Charlie's, <laughs> he, he hates, I think that's his worst station. Is it? I hates him. So I knew like, coming in, I was going to do probably the majority of them. Yeah. So I did the first 40. Mm-hmm. So where you can get to like unbroken? That? No, I just, I just went, just went to 40. He was like, I'll, I'll, I'll take over. Because we knew that, he was always going to do the, the bit of middle section. Yeah. So Just give yourself a rest. I pretty much. So then he jumped in, done. 20 odd I think then I'd done whatever's left I think I'd maybe done like 70 wall balls I think I'd done 70 yeah. I'm running about that um, then finish, but aye, 50 minutes and 55 seconds what was it like seeing that time like I was I couldn't believe it 
I see straight away, I was raging that when I ordered it. I was like, that's just me though, like, right? Yeah. Never happy, never satisfied. No, n- never, no, never, never. But see, within 10 seconds after that feeling went away, I was like, oh my God. Because like, mm. folk were asking, like, what time you going for? And I was like, 50, 52. If you get 52, okay, that's, that's seriously good. Mm. And then I seen 50, 50. Like, see the photographs, I was saying, yeah, they see the photographs that the, the people take off mm. you, like, running about the track. I was looking at them, and my face is... <laughs> like oh my god! Like what, how we manage that? Um, so ah, that was so that's good. a British record. So set a British. We we literally just beat the current British record by two seconds. That's wild, two isn't it? Two seconds. It was like again one more ball or like just it's totally. It's nothing. <laughs> it's no time at all. Um, Let's talk about like hydration and supplements throughout races. Have you do you do much of that? So, as when I first started high rock, I, n- I didn't touch it at all. Mm. Now I. Tr- I try not to, but if I'm like really, really, I'll just, it's more like thrown it over my head. Like, I'm, I'll just kill down. Myself down I, I think we, stopped, we never stopped once, but we like, grabbed. slowed down once mm. and then grabbed it and drunk one over the head. And then it's wild that that can cost you a race, though, isn't it? Mad. Isn't it? Because that, that's the two seconds. That's the yeah. closest race I get. Yeah. Um, and it makes you think, it's like, man, my mouth is so dry. So I just chuck it in. And so hard to drink for them as well. I know. Oh, I know. I just spill them. I never had to I end up knocking them all out. Yeah. Um, I don't take anything during them. Mm. Charlie took a gel. I know, I know quite a lot of people do that. Quite, that's why I asked if, I, if there was I, something you do. I don't, I don't like gels. I've no. never liked them. I just, it's only, well, we're 50, but whatever the time duration is, you do it. It's no, it's not a marathon. I just don't like, because you don't, if you can fuel up for it, something I, I think for most of the guys taking it, it's more a placebo. I think it's so. maybe it's something they're used to in their right. training. And uh, simulations in the gym, I've took two salt capsules before, right? Like just two wee pills and just gub them. Like mm. I've done that during simulations in the gym, but I've never done it in a race. Mm. Um, I probably won't, to be honest. Yeah. I'll just I keep keep going with it because I think mm. if you load up enough before it, but I take these. You've had a precision hydration it's a brand, uh, the gel. Uh, oh. So they do like they're, They sponsor the Iron Man Right okay uh, It's just a supplement brand <coughs> Excuse they've, me They've got some of the strongest Electrolytes in the market Oh do they right. So these ones are 1500 milligrams of sodium Just like None of you know The, the, the cis ones that you get mm. In the water mm. It's four of those in one Oft So I take them so I'm, I'm loaded For long uh, so I'm, I'm loaded up on them So I'm more than you can see old. the salt Coming at you <laughs> oh, It's all white Doing yeah. my shorts And all that Aye that's, that's yeah. my hat. I was like, I was like, well, this fuck's that white stuff coming from? Is that dandruff? And I was like, oh, it's salt. Aye, it's salt, aye. <laughs> um, so I take stuff like that, lead yeah. up to it. So I'm well fueled, well mm. hydrated, didn't you? Um, but during races, I haven't and I probably won't. Mm. Um, but, so see, see out of all this time, like, are you, do you feel like you're starting to get a bit of name for yourself in this aye, sport? Aye. Yeah. That was the thing. So, like, because that's obviously something that ego aside, like, we all like, the attention that comes with things is why we're attracted to looking a certain way and all that. Um, and not many people talk about this because it's like, oh no, no, that's not why I do it. It's like it's fine for that to be a thing because we're social beings. We like we like knowing we've done a good job, yeah, and course, yeah. that's why you, you aim for first place aye, and all that sort of aye. stuff. Um, how does that felt then for you this year? I, I never really went looking for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like I, I love it because like I was thinking when I was in Poland the weekend there. So many people are up to me, like, oh, I've seen you on like Instagram or whatever, and I've seen your race. Like, even now, like, my f- phone's been going wild since. Yeah. Like, it's well, actually overwhelming. Yeah. Like, I love it, I do love yeah. it, but I'm like, oh. you change my number. <laughs> <laughs> Deleting Instagram, but yeah. like, it's as uh, overwhelming, but I, I do love it. Like, especially the amount of people, like, oh, like tips, and stuff like that. Mm. And, like, I'm constantly getting it, like, hundreds and hundreds of tips. It's just, it's just it's pretty passionate, to be mm. honest. Like, I just love helping folk out. Mm. Like, if you can, why would you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know it's been like now I'm. What I say? No, 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 I no one suppose no like a fucking celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like people like obviously after setting. We need to think like you are you are for your age category, even as a Scottish athlete in in high rocks. Where would you say you rank in terms of everything? Obviously, the worlds will be the true teller, won't it? Uh-huh. Of like where you sit, but uh-huh. um, where do you think you sit in amongst all of that crowd? Um, it's hard to say because like. Like the same with the courses, courses are always so different. So like you could do maybe a bit faster there, mm. slower that course. I guess that's the excitement with the worlds coming up. Aye, so it's like, like I, I, I think it's the worlds. Like until you until you compete in the worlds, everybody the best 
is on the same track racing against each other, I don't you can really say, oh, I'm better than you, mm. or I'm better than you. Mm. Because, like I say, there's so many things. Times are different. Aye. It? And that's, aye, I'd say that's, you can't really say anything at all. Mm. That, but, I say we've now got the, the British record, I suppose, so. We're, that's quite cool, uh, yeah. We're ranking high. Yeah. Ranking high, and, um, which is a total dream. Who's your, who do you think is your biggest competitor going into the world? Charlie, I think. Uh, Charlie, <laughs> I think so. I, it's like, uh, where's he from? Uh, Birmingham, I think. Right, okay. I, 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 I think so. Down south somewhere. Somewhere down England. Somewhere down there. But like all the other boys that that I know are like smashing it. Like we're all getting better and better mm. and better. But like we're all like. What about in this, the Scottish scene? Who's in your age category? Uh, I, there's not, I don't. There's, there's no that many to be honest. No. I know that I personally know. I know oh. a few guys. Um, young Luke, he's only eighteen, smashing it. Who is he? Ah, he's, he? he's done a sixty-five pro. <laughs> Paul, I, I, mate, eighteen year old. Um, at the weekend there in uh, Poland, he done sixty five, done sixty seven at pro in the worlds. Um, so he's smashing it. So yeah. like, aye. So the competition's heavy then. Aye, yeah. it's quite a big doubles. I'd say. I said it's more popular in doubles. I think mm. up, like up here, mm. a lot of guys are, are, are smashing the doubles. Out. Uh, I know if you have quite a look at my pals like. Guy Brad, Bradley Wilkie Yeah, I met him at Madrid track. Aye, uh, so like they, well, Madrid, that's mm, what I was going to say They mm. smashed Madrid um, So It's a massive double scene Up here um, Which gives I'm I want to keep doing the Keep doing the doubles as well What well, well, do you think if you're You've to choose one What one are you choosing? So or doubles? Yeah I'd say doubles mate Would you? Ah, yeah, I yeah. think so, aye, aye Because it's more fun in it Because you need to share the pain with someone aye, exactly And like There's so many times you want to slow down you can you know what I don't like your partner doing. There's mm. so many I can't explain how many times I thought I want to stop doing this. Like that during during that double, I was like, I can't I can't keep this going. Yeah. And you just do, you just sort of like take your mind somewhere else and just What like, is the quote? Um I don't know if it's Nick Bear or Hunter or what, whoever it is. It's if you want to run faster, run with faster people. And it's like you're it's crazy when you're in that room and your potential's pushed and you're like, fuck I, I I can't do this. But then you're you're doing it and you're like, fuck I can do it and that's an arcalis that's built up in your mind. Um, so what's the big focus then for next next for you? So we've now qualified. So I've now qualified for world championships for solos and doubles now. Mm-hmm. So me and Charlie have entered for. He's going to do doubles I, together, well, right? Got cool. to do it together at worlds. Mm-hmm. So that's in June next year, and they're all pro weights and stuff as well. Aye, yeah, aye. So that's in Chicago next year. Yep, that's where my focus is now. So that, that's the thing I really wanted to do this season was qualify as early as possible. Aye, so you can have that good off season. Aye, so that's like I'm building any races out with that now. It's just like training runs are like. Try to go for times like mm. me and Charlie are going to go for the world record at, mm. at some point in the doubles. We've got to kind of sit down and whatever when we think that will happen. Are you going to try and do a pro together? Wait, we will do one. I yeah. I think me and him are really suited for open right. as well just now. Um, I I think we're probably better suited for open just now. Well, I think a lot both of us are got to get a lot stronger as well for. Uh, Pro stuff I, I'd say mm. so um, We still will do one Absolutely obviously need to do one anyway For, Aye, for, for the world. So We will do one before that Just to test the waters And stuff like that um, But that's Where the goal is Is, mm. is world championship It's trying to rank as highly as possible I have got um, So I'm in Dublin Next weekend mm-hmm. So I've, I've just booked hard <laughs> I don't, I don't, Again I don't know why I do it I just, I just keep doing it So I've got Dublin Next weekend mm-hmm. uh, That's another That's my second Pro solo event um, And then I'm in Hong Kong the week week after. Is that how close that one is? Is it? I literally fly to Dublin next Saturday to compete that Saturday night because the pro times are like late. Nice. Eight, eight o'clock Wild into it, how late there? But then again, track being lighter, I think that's really not as heavy with as many people on. Well, I thought that as well because when I done Amsterdam the other week, that was a pro solo and my start time was 10 past 8. Right. That was the worst day ever. Like, see, just sitting there. Like, I felt great all yeah, week. And see, yeah. when I woke up that day, I woke up with a cold, my hips were getting tight. I was like, oh my God. Like, all day long, just uh, sitting about. Mm. Um, so, we're flying there on Saturday, next Saturday, could be Saturday night. I'm flying home Sunday morning, and I fly to Hong Kong on Tuesday. Mm. So it's and then, I so a couple of days in. How long are you in Hong Kong for? A week. Right, cool. A week. So you got a wee bit of sightseeing then? Oh, dear. Yeah, but mate, travel again, innit? It's just the travel. Who are you going with this time? Myself. The solo ah, one again? Myself, aye, aye. Um, the guy that owns my gym is made to come, but he bottled it. Did he? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, so now I'm seeing it by myself. So yeah, I'm cool. leaving Tuesday, arriving Wednesday. I have like all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, Friday. Mm. Compete on the Saturday. And that's open? 
So yeah, uh, it's the Asian Championships. Mm-hmm. So they are open, open weights. It's the first ever Asian Championships as well. Cool. Um, so that'll be it'll be interesting to see what the competition's aye. like out there. Aye. It's a major event as well. So, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll eat fifteen um, qualifier. Aye, yeah. aye. So all the best will be there. So it's and do you? So let's talk about Elite Fifteen for a sec then. So for people who are listening who don't know, this is. Ultimately, like the top fifteen athletes of the sport overall, and um, you get your world series, which will then rank whatever. What do you What do you need to do to qualify for the elite fifteen? So this season it's changed slightly. So they now take it's two two you know, of your best, and yeah, so they take your two best all times over the season, the average, mm-hmm. and I can qualify you for the qualifiers basically. Yeah. Um, which do we know what the average times are yet, or are they deciding that later? I think it's about. 56, 57 Right Roughly Right Roughly um, I, th- I think it's roughly around about that Do you feel you're ready for that yet? Nah Nah Nah, nah. Is the goal no, no, setting that? Yeah 100% absolutely um, For solo elite 15 No yet Nah mm. definitely not I'd st- I'd say running wise I'd, I'd put myself up there pretty highly But mm. in terms of like the strength and Power and stuff like required for, which is funny because I've done so many years of bodybuilding and like strength training, and I just yeah. still too weak for it. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's because it's there's a difference between like like you say, but being a good runner, how fast can you run? Mm-hmm. After, like, pushing I'm fatigued, two hundred kilo sled, and then running trying yeah. to run a three twenty kilometer again. Mm-hmm. Um, so then there's tons of work to be done. Tell I'm sorry, pushing for that, but nah, I'm looking forward to. Have you have you like set a goal for what season? You, you want to try and hit that for or is it matter I like taking each season as it comes wait to see what the numbers I'm are coming out myself for next season yeah yeah um, after World Championships next year because like I say it was really my first really was my first pro solo event the Lorraine mm. Amsterdam there yeah and it was 62 so thinking shit there's, there's ah, it's like five minutes is a lot of time to take mm. off a, a, an event um, but well, it I've gives you something to work towards, 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 towards yeah. aye, so I've got like Start re- reverse engineering the stations again, everything that you've done. Aye, yeah. Do you feel you left it all out there with that, that one? Yeah. I, I, I'd say it was quite a hard one as well because I was, so it was me and this other, it was me and this other guy, um, he's a lot older than me. We were kind of like bouncing back and forth. So I, we were kinda like, I was kind of chasing him, but then I ended up kind of like taking the lead by quite a bit. So I mm. didn't have MD to, to chase. So I needed mm. to push me. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, try to push myself, but... You get a bit comfortable as well, seeing you go like, oh, I'm running, so why, why do I need, why do I need yeah, to yeah. suffer anywhere, do you know what I mean? So, I think if I could, see if I could, if I could get like, better, no better competitions, but like, no, you're right. harder uh, competitions, uh, I should uh, say, uh, harder competitions, harder competitions, like, like the doubles, for example, I'd never thought I'd be able to do that until I was pushed to do that, mm. so like, how it's far no could I be pushed to, aye, how far could I be pushed during a solo event if it's like, neck neck with some, mm. some other guy, do you know, so, I'm hoping for a good race next weekend in yeah. Dublin. Um, they have now introduced Elite 15 doubles um, So that's just brand new this season yeah. It's never been done um, That's a bit different to qualify for So there's five races around the world London, Paris, Melbourne, Miami I can't remember the, the, the wherever best Wherever it is yeah. Aye, Wherever it is, they're all in the world You need to come top three Right. So top three over those five Gives you the sort of 15 mm. um, So we are looking to possibly Put our names in for yeah. that Good. Uh, see how how high we can rank. Mm-hmm. The way it works is the guys that are doing elite fifteen solos can also qualify for elite yeah, fifteen doubles. That, yeah. So there's you got Hunter and Graham. Ah, exactly. <laughs> like, I've, I've never been able to chase Hunter and Graham. I'm, like, you know, think so? Not yet. Not yet. Nah, no. Yeah. It's funny because they were doing their doubles the same time I was doing my solos in Amsterdam the other week. All oh, right. Uh, cool. So they were on right. the same track. So like that full Ronkovic and all. They were all on the That's track cool. same time. Yeah. I and I was like watching. I was like. <laughs> You're like, I need to get this game plan Aye. ramped up. Aye, like, I was just, just watch him run, and like, it's ridiculous how fast these guys like. You don't realise how good they are, I think, until you're actually doing mm. it. Like, well, there's Hunter doing like 54 minute pro solo times. He's like running sub 320 runs yeah. while smashing. Aye. Fighting. So, the thing is with this sport, which I think is quite interesting, this is why. It's cool to sit down and have a conversation with you where you are now because you're 21 years old. You've only got a year, a year of training under your belt so far. You're still a complete newbie to this, which is mental to see with the numbers that you're putting out. Do you do you feel that you're, are you aware that you're so new to it or do you feel that 
nah, like the you should be hitting better, better numbers. Obviously, that's going to come the more experience that you get in it. But if you look at like any like peaked endurance athlete, it's like late twenties, early thirties, mid thirties, late thirties. Like these guys have like fifteen years under the belt of pushing that threshold higher and higher. Um, does that excite you, or does that almost overwhelm you a wee bit? No, it excites me to does see it? where I could go. Like, uh, like I have really, really improved the past year. I don't know how I've done it. Like, but I've <laughs> seem to have done it. But like you're saying, I look these guys. Like Charlie, for example, he's him again. He was a pro cyclist in mm. France for I don't know how long, but he was a pro cyclist in France. So you think about that endurance space, leg power, nice the, pain the endurance for aye. so many hours and stuff like that. I don't have that background. I was doing bicep curls. And stuff like that. I was, you know, that's my yeah. background. So chest press machine, chest aye, slice. Aye, that, was, that was my background. So a lot of these guys that I'm racing, the guy I speak to all the time on Instagram, he was a pro Ironman athlete. So these guys have got like massive, massive engines, which mm. I don't have basically. So it's like I've got to constantly, constantly push that. So I kind of, it's a funny one because I, I did think I'll no be. But I don't know. It was a funny one, like. Worlds because I was like, I'm not ready for this level. I just I, I kind of doubted myself because I didn't really have a seriously good race yet. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'm never going to be. I was looking at the times basically. I was looking at these, the Charlie. I'll see. I use my example again. I was looking at the times going, how am I going to chase that? Like I, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at their backgrounds like we're saying, like the Dinas. Like I don't have that background. Yeah. But after like obviously racing the past couple of weeks and stuff like that, I'm like, it's potential here. Potential. Yeah. Aye, hundred percent. Are you prepared to give this? Everything. Sport like the next ten years of your life to work towards then. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Yeah, you see your sport then. You find aye, the, the competitive nature. I feel like it? I'm built for it. Yeah, I I'd say so. Like, but I also enjoy it. That's that's the best thing. Is I do love doing it. Like, I love. I can't even say, but I love running. Like, I never thought I'd ever <laughs> ever ever say that. Right, but I do. I, I love running. Yeah, I do do like you know, and during off season, or maybe going to like ten k races and five k races and stuff like that. Um. So still, still with strength training and still elements of CrossFit. It's not mm-hmm. quite like I don't do the like, gymnastics or snatches or anything like that anymore. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't really transfer over. I was gonna say you, nah, pick, you pick and choose the stuff so that it you doesn't feel. transfer over. Mm-hmm. I think like cleans, power cleans, squat cleans, mm-hmm. they transfer over front squats, all that kind of stuff. I, I do all that still. Um, but I'm saying I'm, this is this is what we're. Aye. Good, good. I mean, you've committed a lot of time, obviously, to it. Aye. Even money. <laughs> don't, you don't, you, you start doing the math. At how many events have you done? So I'm doing I've done Amsterdam, Poland, Amsterdam, I suppose another one. Amsterdam, Poland, Dublin, Dublin Hong, Hong Kong. Kong, and then whatever you sign up to next year. No, that's four. I f- no, it's four. So it's like something like six races in five weeks in six different countries. Or five different countries. <laughs> Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. well, you've chose, chosen the right uh, career path with finance and stuff to ah, really like, feel that. Yeah. that so there's obviously an aspiration to do a bit of coaching in this right. how torn are you between this career path of good job and what interests you there and then per- maybe pursuing your the coaching element a, a constant battle to be honest so yeah. I do do a lot of it just now um, have done for a while um, it's more just like I started off just it's not like just passion I, yeah, I, yeah. Pretty much I like If I can help you Then I will Sort of mm. thing um, I try and date all like, that's, that's, that's the other thing is I try and date all At the same time so you can, No learned yet No, no I, don't, I don't get a will I don't I, I don't think it's It's not about learning I think it, right now This is you t- Sort of trying to find your feet um, it's funny that you say, "Oh, this guy's only eighteen and he's smashing it." You're only twenty-one, mate, and you're smashing it. You need to remember that <laughs> you're in a fucking great <laughs> position. Um, you're pursuing this career path. You've also got mad opportunities coming out through the the CrossFit, uh, the High Rock space. Better not get they too mixed up. Eh? Oh, you'll, you'll cause an argument. <laughs> I know. Um, so the pressure to like pick and choose one. I'd just do do what you're doing. You love both sides of them, and one will take over the other, or maybe you'll find a way to make both of them work. Both work eh? right. I do, like, I, 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 do, do, I, I do do both, so it's... Aye, right. it's working so far. Aye, it's Aye. working so far, so... You were looking for, like, your own unit and that sort of thing. Is that still a dream to do? Aye, or, 100%. like, have you got into the circle? I know you're up at Ricky's and stuff Aye, like so that. I, I love training there, but 100%, I, that is... Mm. That is a sort of... What would be your dream facility? Like, what, what's it What's it look like? You ever seen the 247 gym? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I've seen like I have no like I don't know that in scope. Aye, out if, you, if you look at that, I'm like, that's what you want. That's what I want. <laughs> that's what I want. It's just like it's just, it's cool. 
just etiquette. Right. Like, yeah, it's having you need so. Mm. Look at that. It's like, that's what I want. So, anyway, edge the words. Right. Cool. Uh, so, hopefully, once it happens at some point. Uh, well, well, you kind of manifest it and make it kind of come to fruition. Right. So, another question for you then when it comes to high rocks, if you had to change anything with it, what would you change to make it better? Change the race or that? Just change? anything to do with high rocks, whether it's the events, how they pick their elite athlete, like whatever, whatever comes to mind. I would definitely, the standards, I, I would say like, so many like the UK I think the UK events are the worst events oh really I think so aye because I'm pretty sure it's the same kit that they use like every country's got their own team so they use like that kit for that country right that's why I don't know why I don't even why I'm racing in Dublin actually. <laughs> so I don't know why right but anyway the sleds it's always the problem with the sleds it's, right. it's sometimes you go to it there's always a thing like oh is it fast sleds or slow sleds so it's always a question folk, folk ask when, before, before they do it mm. if you if you could you could be your best ever and go on track for like the best time you've ever but then you get to it and it's just like there's inconsistencies with the carpets or the sleds mm. or whatever and that just ruins the full race for you like you see all the time like there's definitely fast courses and slow courses but you look at times and go right how's he done 50 got 56 minutes then and like 59 then like mm. how's that it's a big difference mm. it's only I mean, it's only three minutes but three minutes in a high rock especially at that sub 60 already yeah it's a massive time um so i definitely say the standards across stuff like that. To get them closer. I looked at the, the at Birmingham uh, last week, two, yeah. a few weeks ago. There, um, the sleds looked horrendous. I don't know what happened in there. Mm. Maybe it was really bad. Uh, it seems to be a common theme though mm. this season. Before, <laughs> I, before I started in Poland the weekend, there we had a walk around the venue before I started, and I actually got videos. I was looking at the carpets, and you could just see them doing that uh, on the carpet. I'm like, look at that! Like they were changing carpets mid race in Madrid. Are they? Uh, Aye. But it must be a hard thing because the venues that you choose is obviously concrete floor. It's <laughs> just double sided duct tape. <laughs> that's getting put Aye. down to try and keep it down. So, so but I, when I didn't, when I got my race, I could see it rippling, but it didn't affect it. Mm. So, there's, it, honestly, it is what it is, isn't it? Aye. Aye. You can't, you can't go. No, I'm not racing there because of that. Cause you don't know until you get there. Mm. Um, and the map, like the venue like, layouts, the courses. Again, it's the building that they, they use. So you can't really. There's mm. only so much you can do to keep them as as similar as possible. Mm. What's well, been the best course? Like, um, f- like that you've raced them in, that was actually done really well. And I, I, I really enjoyed the Poland one the weekend there. Huh? I, when I saw it come out j- at the start of the week, I thought, oh, that looks horrible, man. Like, it looked a lot worse than yeah. it did. Mm. But it, the run track was really good because it was like, there's nice bends on it. Mm. It, felt like a, it felt like an actual run track. Like a, I know, run. like a hard corner. Uh, it's like mm. a nice kind of bits like that. The, it was split between like two, no halls, but it was like one big massive hall, but it was like a kind of divider thing. Mm. So you couldn't see next door, through the rock zone basically. So you couldn't see the, the out tunnel and the in tunnel the same, because it was like you had to run run. So a lot of people got mixed up and ran like out the end, oh, because right. they were turning around and going, oh, there's a, they didn't run in it. And right. then they were getting like, well, I can't even remember the time penalty, but they were getting penalties constantly. Um, so there's... Aye. To, uh, there's benefits in that to, to other ones. Aye, but the run track for that, I'd say, is probably one of the best ones. Mm. And it's quite wide as well. Mm. Um, so there's the times you, you kind of get to the side, run, 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 run. Yeah. Anything else you would change? What do you think you're judging? Aye, it's, no, so I've seen that they're, they're now doing like paid roles because a lot of people, so I don't know if anybody doesn't know, you get, you also get a free Aye, spot to ticket. a race in that country yeah. if you, if you uh, judge. They're now doing like paid Rolls for like the wall ball and stuff like that. Um, it's like been getting a lot of shit. <laughs> aye, like a lot of people, obviously they don't have any high rock experience, so people might like no be, no judge it properly. They might go like too lenient on folk. Mm. Some people will go like a bit too harsh. Aye, too harsh. Um, but in my experience, I've never had. They've been alright. I have always mm. been fine. Um, aye, I've always been. But, mm. aye. I've seen, I've seen a, I'll say, I recorded some stuff for the the vlog for uh, what we done in Madrid, and I'm doing burpees and the video was on me, but I didn't realise the guy to life, and I was like, he's not even trying. But then a, a part of me is like, we're not in the top percentile. Like we're doing it for there's a bit of fun as we're racing and that. So to an extent, I don't know if it should matter too much. But then seeing some people who were like close to podium, podium scores, and I'm like, 
literally just saw your last couple of wall balls and that sort of stuff and it's like they're questionable but I don't know it's just one of the things that just needs to get better I've with seen a lot of stuff when the Reds questionable there was a guy that got <laughs> slaughtered the other week at Birmingham because it wasn't his well so he had like a different colour so when you're racing pro and racing open you get a different colour wristband oh right it opens I think it's like light grey oh he put black. the lighter weight didn't he? he picked up the 24 kettlebells Aye. for the farmer's carry and he was just like spunk with them <laughs> He did have a different colour wristband on, so and there were still open guys on the track, so the, the judges went, I just, uh, just pick the ones up. Yeah. But when you're a seasoned pro, uh, you know, you, you know, know what you're, you're going for. You You've been training for there's 30. There's a difference between 24 and 32, there's <laughs> a difference. Um, so uh, you, you always. Human error, isn't it? Human error. Do you think they'll ever change the structure of actual high rocks? Mm. So I think we'll bring in different things for it. Because, so I, I thought, right, this hype's going to die down. I was, I've spoke to somebody else about this before. Has it got to die down like this? Because it's a, it's a trend, I would say a trend. Mm. It's a good trend, obviously, but it's a trend in it. So has it got to die down? Because it's the same event over and over and over. But then you go, well, so is a marathon, so is a 10K, mm. so, is, so is every sport, really. Mm. They're all the same. The only thing that changes is who you're competing against, racing against, venues, where you're going. I don't think it'll go anywhere, I don't think it will change at all, I think there might be different, so they're now bringing like kids versions of it, like, mm. they'll, I think they tried it at London, so mm. like, stuff like that, so I think they'll have potentially shorter courses maybe, longer mm. courses that might happen at some point, Yeah. Um, obviously they've just changed a bit of it for this season, like the women's now doing 100 wall balls, yeah, yeah. so there's like different stuff like that coming in, um, but the actual overall race, I don't see, why would you, do you not really like, yeah, that'll be. A, I, I, mean, I then, generally don't it know. Gets, it gets to the point where they go right. Well, times won't get broken because they're they're just too fast. But then, mm. how often do you hear about like marathons? I like all that record was like thirty year old, and that guy just broke it. Mm. So it could be the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it's still, it's been going for like seven or eight year high rocks. But obviously, nobody really knew about it up until last last year. Yeah. Or, uh, end of last year. And it's just about to penetrate that American market as well. Exactly. Like uh, your big influencers like Nick Bear and all that yeah, sort exactly. of done it. Um, be interested to see how he comes into it. I know, I guess, when's that, like three weeks or something? Two, two weeks, two weeks away, yeah. Dallas, yeah. Dallas, yeah. Dallas, yeah. Dallas, yeah. Interesting to see, like, mm. massive guy, strong guy, mm. 240 miles from there. Just training like an animal for it, if you watch his YouTube stuff. I watch it, I do yeah. watch it. It's and is that is that where you take inspiration for your own training and that sort of things? Aye, guys, like, yeah. aye, I definitely. Hunter Mac, I'd say, is the, the biggest. Sort of yeah. Because again, like, guys like him have had this, like, fitness racing. Aye, Spartan racing. Aye, stuff like that, mm. background. So I've been, like, how did I do that with right. that background? So I'm like looking at different stuff like how to have like power outputs and different speed sessions, mm. threshold sessions and stuff like that. Because although it's so although high rocks is so simple, you can complicate it where you're training, like you might try and like I've yeah, you can it, get so in the weeds with everything. Aye. But it's no complicated. Mm. So like now it's I keep it like as simple as I can. So what would you say your simple parts of training are? Uh, is there one element, one under fatigue? Get better endurance, get stronger. They're like the three main categories. I feel like it should break down to. So like now, so I'm also like, like I said, I'm racing Dublin next weekend, Hong Kong, Belair. I'm then taking a break. We all need, we all needed a break. Um, <laughs> or Until you book another one before Christmas. <laughs> well, nah, definitely not. I've got, I've only got two booked next year so far. Right. So I've got European Championships in Vienna. So obviously I missed that this year. Mm. So I'm now got to right, go back. back. Yeah. So I've got that in the end of February. So that currently that's my. Next one after these right. next two. That's my next one. That's the end of February. Then I'll have Worlds in June. Mm -hmm. After I will race. Ah, you'll do the pro doubles. Aye, but I'm I'm gonna race a lot less next year mm. leading up to it. I want to just train basically. Actually get better because I'm I think I've got I've competing every weekend past <laughs> couple of weeks basically. I'm not getting any better. You're not gonna get get any better between because you've obviously got like that kind of taper week. So mm. You're not really you know try to shake off fatigue. You're not getting any better. Even that, I've had this full week basically off, like mm -hmm. competing. But the first three days, I was still recovering off the back of that last weekend. Mm -hmm. Again, that's another week I'm missing. So mm -hmm. you do lose a lot of time competing back to back. You're not really going to get any better. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, like I'll peak, I'll peak for a few weeks, try and smash out as much as possible, as, as good and results, yeah. and then make sure there's a proper off season. Aye, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. That's my plan is to take <coughs> basically. All December, all January, and build into the end of February mm. for our Europeans, and then worlds. And Are you ever going to get a coach or anything like that? Are you quite interested in learning it yourself? 
Aye, I definitely will. I've something that I've been looking at more and more often now because I'm like, right, I've got myself to this point, but there's only so far I can get myself. Mm. Like I keep like I keep saying, I don't have a background in any of this other stuff, so there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about. That mm. I'll learn, but I don't, I don't I don't know yet. So, mm. um, hundred percent, I I will just have me back to end <laughs> Locked in. Uh, see, see uh, haven't haven't logged anything. Uh, in I know, I know, no, yeah. I've not even spoke to Andy. I've yeah. spoke to Andy about anything yet. Um, but no, hundred percent, I. I will be looking to do that, especially yeah. with where I want to push to. So, what would you do, like nutrition wise, just now? Have you focused much on that? Have you noticed much changes of over the? It's a lot more, I'd say, uh, than what I was like. You sort of take it for granted at the start. It's like, huh, don't really need to pay attention to this. It sort of takes care of itself because you can get away with more. But mm-hmm. you realise what as you start to dial that in, it makes a big difference to your performance. Mm-hmm. I think I know a lot of people that I'm like been trying like. Just to basically, it's like they'll train so hard for so long, they mess it up the day before, the day before, mm. no feeling enough, no resting enough, stuff like that. There's like you could cost yourself the, f- the full race, and you just trained mm. 16 weeks or something like that for it. Um, so uh, it's different because again, I was also always training for aesthetic stuff like that, so like carbs for <laughs> what was carbs at that point, like I wasn't eating any because I was just yeah. trying to stay as lean as, lean as I could. Um, no, I so I days look at the carbs, <laughs> just eat them. Five hundred grams. Oh, mate, like seven. <laughs> easy, is it? Oh, easy. Like, cause my training volume's so high, and mm. I'm burning through. Like, I was training, training this morning, and like forty minutes, I burned like eight hundred calories or something. Like that. Mm. So it's like you're just churning through. Tons. Hi, mm. just churning through. And you've got to, you have to keep that going. Like, what would you say your total calorie intake is just now, roughly? Um, so I, the way I do it, I think people maybe do this different, but the way I do it, is I keep it the same mm. full through the full week. It normally balances out as a kind of like maintenance, kind of maybe slight, slight surplus. I'm not really looking to gain any weight just now. Mm. I'm, not, I'm definitely not looking to lose any. Yeah, it's more kind of maintaining where I'm at just now. I'm probably around about four and a half thousand calories a day mm. right now. Um, some days are higher and higher, depending so on your training. I'll yeah, yeah, go higher than that. Mm. I wouldn't like go way, way above because. I balance out. It's like your carb cycling in a way. You I, you have higher carbs I, in the days you train. Rest days I still eat the same. Yeah. So I don't take. I don't eat much less. Again, it's performance we're training for. So you might know, under fueling. Mm. Aye, for what you're. Aye. What you're trying to hit you're PBs. Recovering basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, <coughs> I tend to keep it within about kind of like four, th- two, four, five mm. every day. But if there's like days where I've you know went crazy high, um, I'll go. A bit higher, yeah. But across the week, it kind of balances itself out um, the same. I kind of sit around about the same weight mm. all the time. There, oh, that's cool. That's cool. What would you say, like, your best tips for someone then starting out in high rocks or try to beat their time in high rocks through everything that you learned? Like, what's like maybe the golden nugget or a couple of golden nuggets that you could give them that you found out? out starting out for the beginning, um, I would say, nip, just don't put pressure. So, like, I speak to a lot of people and like, get yourself so worked up. I was like, you've paid to be there, smile, enjoy it. You know what I mean, like. Enjoy it if you could. If you can grab a partner and do a doubles first, mm-hmm. I'd say do that. <coughs> Excuse me. You're then getting that race experience, but it's also half the workload, and you can enjoy it more because you're a pal. You can, yeah, I see people all the time like having a laugh during it, which is brilliant. I've just did it for different reasons. Mm. I'm also pushing to try and be the best. Be able to do it just just to prove to yourself that you have actually complete it. Mm. Best thing about high rocks is it's so the entry requirements are low. It's no crossfit. Don't need to be a gymnast. Not these other things. So. And like you see so many people doing it. There's a guy in uh, Amsterdam, eh, sorry, no, Amsterdam, Poland, the weekend there, eighteen nine year old. Hmm. He done it by done doubles with his son. I'm pretty sure it's the course. oldest guy ever to do it. Yeah. Um so just have fun, enjoy it. Hmm. Um like I say, if you can do a doubles with a, with your pal, I think that's the best way to, to break into it. Training wise, don't overcomplicate it. Like there's so much time, like you can it's not going anywhere, like yeah. it's not gonna go anywhere. So don't stress yourself if you don't get kind of that time that you're aiming for. Mm. I've done it myself too many times, put too much pressure on myself, don't hit the time and then it plays your head a bit. Mm. Um, so. The main ones then? Main Good. ones, I just, yeah. honestly mate, just enjoy it. Like, that, I, I can't really say anything yeah. that. Like, you, you'll learn different, everybody's got different methods of training, different coaches and gyms, about whatever it is, your, your, your training's got different methods depending on what they think mm. is going to work best for you especially because everybody's different, different, Abilities and stuff like that, um, but overall, I, I have definitely say just yeah, good, good. So, the main thing for you is obviously going to reach this new height, the uh, aim for the elite 15 to see where you end up ranking in the worlds. But I'm sure you'll smash out of the park. 
what's the see when you kind of look back every and everything that you kind of told us um you're on this like solo no vendetta but this solo journey of like this is what i want is that ever get a wee bit lonely aye aye definitely like I never knew MD else it was doing. So somebody always people always said to me, "You need to do doubles." I was like, "I don't know MD. Mm. I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know MD else <laughs> does it." And then I trained myself. For, so I, back to CrossFit. I left the CrossFit gym because it was like obviously CrossFit focused, and I wanted to do the Hyrox. So I left that and started training like a commercial gym. So I was just training myself every single day myself for months and months and months and months. Yeah. I never met anybody else doing Hyrox until I went to World Championships this year. So I was training from October my first Hyrox mm. all the way to June this year myself. Never even, never even spoke to MD because I didn't even know MD. Mm. Till I went through Worlds, I then met people and then I've been training with different people kind of through Glasgow stuff like that. And especially now that I'm a bit more known in it as well. So like, I now know like everybody. Uh, and there's so many more people that do it now. Like especially like doing with Glasgow and stuff like that. Everybody does high rocks. Like mm. everybody does it. <laughs> um, so it does the whole hum- thing. I guess lonely, but no. I guess you've got to push yourself there and surround yourself mm. with like be different folk if you can reach out and can, can, I, can I come train with you aye aye come you know what I mean like yeah. push out and is that what you've done then is that I, aye good that's what I did I, I, I reach out to like different people like especially with people who are faster than better mm. than me basically um, curious to learn like what they're doing like, and all that yeah if you don't think you can learn off someday or they're better than you then you'll never really get aye. any better do you know what I mean it's so a silly like, mentality like, haven't it sometimes um, so I know I, re- I, re- I reach out to people all the time and uh, ask for different tips and mm. um, it's just when you absolutely. when you said earlier on about kind of going on this solo journey of like traveling and all this and um obviously that builds your confidence to like talk to people and all that sort of stuff and then you found a sport that you get a bit of a buzz and a dunt from and you get to start to find friendships and all this sort absolutely. of stuff and that there yeah. um so you got are you like did i see that ricky said that you guys are sponsored like you're like kind of repping his gym brand while you're out there or is that I, uh, I, 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 that's quite a cool I, thing I, to like I, come from it I, I, um just from something that you're purely, purely passionate about mm-hmm. Um, so would you ever do the relay side of things? He's done that. I did one the weekend. Oh, did you? Yeah. I did one the weekend there. That first time, didn't it? It was just, just one. <laughs> one I was <laughs> three, three high rocks. Ah, that's crazy. I've done solo doubles, <laughs> come for doubles. Mm. Not even like a kill doing or not. Just really, off. relays look fun. So it looks like see if you're fresh for it, you send it. Aye, see like, what your potential is. Yeah, fast you can go. It's ridiculous, but like, what is it like two? You do two, 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 two changes two, and two, two right. Two aye. runs and two stations. Oh, that's nothing, eh? You run up and like tag the next person in, and mm. it's up to you whatever one you might do. What would you? What would your strengths lie? Well, I had to do. I done. I done both there because I done row and ski. <laughs> I suppose that's your. That was like, but, but like, I was. <laughs> there's nothing in the I, tank. Like, there's no strength. Like it's just all <laughs> engine. Movement. And I'd, I'd run a doubles because you go for doubles. Half an hour later, on the really. Oh yeah. Aye, half an hour. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get wow. a warm up or nothing. I didn't kill doing. I looked like so stuck. You're stuck in. <laughs> Come off. Straight back up. Jeez, oh man. That's didn't, crazy. Aye, just straight back up. That's but, crazy. Um, I'd like to, so, a team that I was with, with my, my doll's partner as well, it's called Theatre, it's a brand called Theatre, um, they're growing massively now, mm. they're like the fitness racing space. Good. Um, so, they did the really, and broke the world record there. Oh, did they? There, aye, oh, so brilliant. My doubles partner came off that minute, and, that and the world record. <laughs> was, aye. Insane. It's the fastest ever high rocks. Wow. 47 minutes. Oh, is that what they end up getting, is it? So, I'm kind of insane. It's just getting crazy where they're going for times. Right, so let's say all this disappears, where does it leave you? If I had always uh, left. Jane, you'd pivot. What, what other things can I like I scratch would, that edge for competitiveness? I would do. I'd probably start training a bit more CrossFit again. Oh, would you? I yeah. would probably go back. Doing it. No, I, I'd probably go back down that avenue. But I, li- I really like lucky like Ironmans and triathlons. Oh, I, I do like big and and stuff. I'd mm. push for that. Um, I keep saying I want to do one. Aye. Um, what are you doing then? I know. I, I'm, oh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, Christian done that, Keltman. That looks. It's the hardest one in Britain or Scotland or something? I think it's the top three hardest, um, what do they call it, triathlons? Mm -hmm. Is it classed as a triathlon or whatever it is um, in the world? I think it falls under that category and it's right in our doorstep. You need to qualify and all this sort of stuff. But I always like the idea of doing it, but I can't swim. (laughs) Because I I say I can run, obviously. I can run, I can bike to an extent. You can hold a bike. Swimming. Uh, it freaks me out. Oh, I don't know. Freaks like, me out. Like, oh, wow. I know. Five and a guy's going to be kicking you in the face. <laughs> and split it. Ah, like. uh, it seems a bit. It seems a bit crazy. But here, I'm, I used I to say do, I couldn't run. Um, well, so did I. Uh, um, I would do a half one, half Ironman. Um, Dip your toe in the water a wee bit. See uh, what it's like. when I was in, Lisa, uh, in June there, there was a one in one that week next following weekend. Mm-hmm. So all the guys who were there training, I thought oh, that was quite cool. So I would definitely do something like that. Mm-hmm. I'd probably go for 
Sie haben noch dann einen Marathon. Auf der Avant Tour Ultra Marathon ist noch dann der Marathon. Das war ich went over the Marathon das ist. Yes. Um, Would you do it just to see where the time's at? Aye. I think this is where it gets very you can get quite obsessive over it. Um, I don't know if you've run into this in your training yet, where you're obviously you've picked this as your sport, this is what you want to try and be the best at. And you go into your off season, for example, you start heavier deadlifts or whatever it is, or getting a faster run time, you're like you do the 5k race, the 10k race, you're like, I want to win that too. I want to be the best at that. And it's like, oh, fuck, what do I pick and choose my that battles? Was, that's, that's my problem, is I want to be good at everything. Yeah. So, like, that's why I went and said I did that ultra back in May. Mm. And then two of my mates ran the West Island Way. Yeah, so it was just like... Not, not that long ago. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, well done, you're growing. Anyway. I, like, so oh, I said, okay. no, I, like, I get injured far too easy. Mm. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. Okay, um, so I went out and supported them. I ended up running with them. I ended up running from midnight, eight in the morning. Oh, that's the one I seen. That is yeah. the one I seen. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was like forty nine, fifty kilometers. So yeah. I, I clocked in that day. And I done hundred seventy kilometers. I think it was. Was it that one? Aye, it's just over a hundred miles, isn't it? Aye, yeah. Aye. Cool, cool. Yeah. So, so I definitely would do more endurance stuff. Mm. Like I think daily training, I'd keep the sort of functional fitness, mm. fit kind of style. But like I'd, I'd be looking towards doing like big endurance stuff, a couple times a year. Ironmans, marathons, ultras. That's cool. It's cool. Well, well, yeah. You get time on your side, and uh, there's tons of things that you could. Right. I don't need to do all this year. That's all. I don't need to have it this year. Uh, you've plenty Spread of time. You've plenty Spread of time. Uh, but yeah, no. Thank you for coming on and, oh, and for sharing me. your story and that sort of stuff. I'll shout out where people can follow you and all that sort of stuff. So um, you mentioned about coaching, then people can they reach? Can yeah, they work yeah, with you? I, yep. How does it work with you? Is it just online stuff that you're doing then? Yep, just now. Online I, support. Uh, so cool. I do like. One to one stuff. I uh, also do like group coaching as well. So mm. group, judging, group, group coaching stuff is more for like beginners stuff like that. Mm. So like that's why I program that. It's for like kind of beginner stuff. Mm. Um, and then like guys who are like pushing for podiums, better pro times mm. and stuff like that. Um, cool. No, just high rocks as well. Also yeah. Like kind of different. It's, I do a lot of performance coaching as well. Aye. Um, but I do have a lot of guys that again have the aesthetic goals that are and then, kind of used to. You know? Yeah. So I've got. I think I had like good background and different stuff like so. I thought, why, why not uh, blend them together? That, basically, and help it folk. Now it's under the brand. Was it Pillar? Uh, aye, aye, Pillar Performance. Pillar Performance. Yeah, yeah. cool, cool. I'll leave a link to all that in the show notes and that. But aye, thank you for coming on, mate. Pleasure. Appreciate that.